It's time for Mac Break Weekly. Well, the iPhone 4S is out. We'll put Siri through her paces. Talk about whether this is earth shattering or just another ho hum product. Uh, I think you probably know the answer. Mac OS Ken joins us next for Mac Break Weekly. Netcasts you love from people you trust. This is Twit. Bandwidth for MacBreak Weekly is provided by Cashfly at C A C H E F L Y dot com. This is MacBreak Weekly, episode 269, recorded October 18th, 2011. Good vibrations. MacBreak Weekly is brought to you by GoToMeeting. Today's mobile world makes easy-to-use collaboration software more than nice to have. It's a necessity. For your free 30-day trial, visit GoToMeeting.com and use the offer code MACBREAK. And by Audible.com. To download the free audiobook of your choice, go to Audible.com slash MACBREAK. And by Ford, featuring Wi-Fi connectivity with available sync and my Ford Touch. Now your car could be a Wi-Fi hotspot. Check it out in the new 2012 Ford Focus and learn more about the technologies Ford is bringing to its vehicles at Ford.com slash technology. It's time for Mac Break Weekly, the show that, uh, well, covers Macintosh stuff. I want to thank you, Alex Lindsay, for filling in for me last week while I was on vacation. Pleasure. And we're going to use that tool again if you're watching live. Uh, so that uh, you can ask questions, vote on questions, and uh, if we have time in the show, we'll get to it. I, I hate to. The, my only my only reserve on this is that the shows have gotten already too long, and I don't want to add another <laughs> two hours to the show. <laughs> so, time permitting, I think we're more like more likely to use this on a slow news day than we are on a uh, on a day like today, which is nothing but news. Anyway, Alex, thank you for filling in, and mm -hmm. the address for this, if you want to vote, is uh, pixacore.force.com slash pixacore. Pixelcore.force. Is this Salesforce stuff? Yeah, it's, sales. it's, a, it's a, <laughs> something that they don't use much anymore. But, it, but it's, a, uh -huh, interesting. it's a great little... It's basically like Dig, except um, customized. Very cool. Yeah, so you can vote questions up and down Very as well. Cool. As Pixelcore. P-I-X-E-L-C-O-R-P-S dot corpse dot... Uh, corpse. Core dot force <laughs> dot com slash feedback? Pixelcore. Pixelcore. Oh, you have Pixelcore in there twice. There's a reason. We, we do it for a lot of different things. This is just the generalized there it one. There on the so screen. It's, it's a little... We're, we're, we're going to fix the... Also here from School Bus Land, Mr. OS, Mac OS Ken, Ken Ray. Hey, Ken. Hey, Leo. How's it going? Welcome back. Thanks. Thanks for having me back. Good I to appreciate have you. it. The whole time you lived, like, down the street, we never had you on, and now that you've moved to Rochester... Nah, Buffalo. Buffalo. Somewhere. Rochester would be nice, huh? <laughs> Is that the big city? <laughs> I'm not all highfalutin, Leo. <laughs> now that you're no, in I mean, Buffalo. Yeah, I know. Well, you don't know what you got till it's gone, right? Yeah. Oh, People like me confuse Rochester and Buffalo, but there is a difference. I guess so. I've never actually been to Rochester. <laughs> so I don't know. I, they, won't, they won't let me in. Anyway, it's, <laughs> like it's great to have you. for a while first. <laughs> it's great to have you. And then okay. from, from Rochester to Dorchester... <laughs> Dorchester. Dorchester. Andy Naka, who apparently is studying Zumba. No, no, this is, this is, this is, it's, it's rare that you get a chance to see uh, Spider-Man 2, Spider-Man, and a female version of uh, the Blue Beetle, and some anime guy fruging and boogalooing on a public stage. That's the reason why I went to New York Comic-Con. Comic-Con. <laughs> oh, you must be happy. Now, do you, do you don't go to San Diego Comic-Con. No, I don't. It's way, it's way too big. And for, if you live on the East Coast, it's like, it's it's, yeah, you spend 1500 bucks, And now it's like, okay, I'm not going to buy gum while I'm here. I've spent $1,500 right. to be at a comic convention. So is this the first New York Comic Con? No, it's the fifth of the sixth. And it's just been getting bigger and bigger and bigger. They had 100,000 people uh, this year. And on Saturday morning, if not for the fact that I had a press pass, I would have had to wait 45 minutes to an hour to get in. Because wow. it was just 1,000 people. And they're trying to manage the crowds as best they could. Uh, and it was, it's, 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 it's a human nature that for, for decades, we here on the East Coast have been hoping for a big national comic convention uh, to, to be nearby. Now that we have one, it only took us three or four years to say, oh, it's so big and crowded. I don't even know if I want to go anymore. <laughs> it's not about comics. It's about the movies and the TV shows. It jumped the shark. Yeah, yeah, yeah it isn't really about, in San Diego anyway, isn't really about comics so much as, uh, as, as, as you say, it's Hollywood. Yeah. Anyway, welcome all. Uh, we are all here talking about our new iPhones. Boy, is that a boring subject, huh? I see you sitting with the Galaxy 
uh, S2 and an iPhone. I, I've been testing them back and forth. Kind of head cameras. to head. Huh? Yeah, kind of. The cam- we, we actually threw them up in, um, uh, over the weekend. I put them up on a, one of our resolution charts uh, together. Yeah. To see what cameras, because they're both eight megapixels. Yeah. So I haven't done the color, low light. You know, I test. have to say the color on the uh, f- iPhone 4S is pretty amazing. It is. The, the pure Very resolution, accurate. I think that the Galaxy is like just a, a, a nose ahead of the, of the um, and I'll post some of the, the images, but the, um, when, I, when I put it up against the resolution charts, it looked like it was just a little bit sharper than the iPhone, but I haven't, I haven't tested, the, as, again, the color uh, or low light performance. I have to say the image, the image quality the images on the iPhone great. 4S is pretty spectacular. Yeah. And, you know, I didn't, I probably, I was one of the people who, uh, uh, said, um, you know, the day after, if you have an iPhone 4, it's fine to wait, no hurry. Siri's cool, but I think Siri will be available on all the platforms as soon as it goes out of beta. I don't mm-hmm. think that they're going to keep it on iPhone 4S only. Uh, we should talk about that. Um, what do you think? Uh, is this is this an upgrade? F- must have upgrade for, certainly for an iPhone 3GS owner. And I think that's yeah, the absolutely. intent. I think every other year now, right? That's the idea. Yeah, well, certainly. I mean, if you, if you got the sort of cash, you can buy a brand new phone every single year. Or if you're so clumsy with your phones, you could manage to drop one down a toilet <laughs> once a year. Uh, then that's that's a great move for you. But yeah, I, I, I don't think that anybody will be willing to. It's it's hard it's hard to justify upgrading from the four to the four S. Although the four S is a lot more significant of an upgrade than the lack of a change of appearance would uh, would indicate. Yeah, that's an interesting choice. Although I think that was intentional on Apple to make you feel okay. If you have an iPhone 4, right? Yeah, well, no, not just that, but I mean, it's, it, isn't it silly to think that uh, Apple would design, would come up with a design as radical as the design for the iPhone 4 and then say, no, it's it really, it's, it's it, God, that's so 2010, that's so dated. <laughs> I really, really don't, I mean, what, when, when you design something that has really no features like this and it's as simple and classic as possible, the whole point of that design is to make sure that you could be using this phone five years later and uh, you, oh, you but come on, Andy, come on, new, you know, this. you know that the iPhone five will not look this way or will it? Uh, well, I don't know. Uh, there's it, it didn't take very long for everybody to start backpedaling on uh, well, all those. Yes, rumors. all of my all of my iPhone five pr- pr- predictions were absolutely <laughs> spot on. I assure you it's just that and this, this was a direct quote from somebody that I don't I don't want to name him. But he was saying uh, I, it, my, my sources, my my sources tell me that when Steve Jobs knew that the end was coming, oh, he decided that man. he was going to put all of his passion into the iPhone five. And that the iPhone 4S was a shabby little attempt at an iPhone. That was fine. As long as he put his passions into the iPhone 5. All the wonderful features that I promised you were going to be having were going to be in the iPhone I 5. I saw that story, too, and I thought that was reprehensible. Actually. Yeah, I thought that was... That's, that's just dumbass. Using I mean. Steve Jobs' uh, name to justify your bad lead or your bad tip. Or yeah. Just, it's reprehensible. Yeah. Well, I mean, you, you gotta. It, you, it takes. A, I've I've done this before, and I've said I've 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 heard a rumor and had enough data behind it that I thought it was valuable for someone to hear. Uh, and with great, I was so tentative about uh, uh, saying this sort of stuff. And I did, and once or twice I've been wrong. But if that happens, that's you know that's that's life in the NFL. You got to say, okay, I I had I I wasn't just being irresponsible. I thought I had it right, but I didn't. Oh well. Well, and, and my experience of uh, talking to anyone that might be down in uh, one infinite loop is that when Steve Jobs was there, he pretty much paid attention to everything. <laughs> yeah, including the T-shirt design yeah. and yeah. the leather in the, uh, yeah. uh, the, 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 the Where, company van. I yeah, mean, yeah, everything. So it, it, it's really it, it was really kind of stunning to see that article, though. I mean, to just see somebody double down like what <laughs> three three yeah. days later. It's like, I don't know. Oh, yeah. I'm totally we were right. About this. We're still you, right. You just wait. <laughs> well, <laughs> come back in a year. And I know this is hopeless. But uh, can we now please just remember these rumors are worthless? They're 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 worth them, you know the toilet paper they're written on. I mean, it's just of, of course we can't. Uh, Three days later, Leo. Three I know. Immediately, we're talking about it. here we are. <laughs> immediately, <laughs> it's it's incredible. Uh, all right. Well, <laughs> uh, you know what? I'm glad they didn't change the case because all my accessories still work. Well, that's and I, I think, think that was one of the nice. big features yeah. of it. Not not changing is is that I have so many cases and I have yeah. so many little chargers and and all kinds of things for my iPhone that it was going to be. I was a little bit. I was uh, bracing for impact for a new iPhone 5 that I was going to get, and then now I have to get a whole bunch of new cases, and so I was kind of glad. Yeah. So, um, gosh, I, I, there's so many things to talk about. I, I don't want to kind of lump them all in one, one big uh, bunch. So uh, uh, let's uh, start with, um, golly, I mean, a lot has happened uh, since I was here last. Let's start with the iPhone 4S sales. 
The <laughs> four million uh, Apple announced four million iPhone 4s sold in the first weekend, not only eclipsing previous iPhone sales, eclipsing all previous smartphone no. sales, not only eclipsing all previous smartphone sales, possibly the fastest selling consumer electronics device of all time. <laughs> Why? I mean, not bad for a minor upgrade. Weren't we a little, dis <laughs> weren't we a little disappointed? <laughs> By uh, what was in this? Yeah, we thought it was a minor upgrade. I guess we were wrong. Well, the, no, does that, does that, is that the pre-orders as well as the as well it's as well as the new sales? So that's the you know. So there was three million pre-orders. I think wasn't there in the first weekend? Right, yeah. right. So then another million bought them. Well, it doesn't. You know, I mean, the point is that they count it the same way they always have. Right. Uh, it's so, it's the most sales ever. Uh, people went to stores and or got in the mail their iPhone four S's. Four million of them. Partly Sprint, right? Pen up demand at Verizon, right? I think, I think this well, is. I think, yeah, I think with 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 smartphone sales, there's so many factors that come into play because it really isn't an. It's not like an iPod where you can sort of buy one whenever you want. Uh, this might have been a perfect storm sort of event where not only were the features there, not only was the, it a good presentation, but also. Just a lot of people were in a position where they were able to con they were able to buy a new phone at this time. Uh, I think that a lot of people were also sort of aiming themselves towards 2011 as the year that they were going to finally ditch whatever they had uh, existing, whether it was a 3GS, whether it was an Android phone, whether it was a even just a basic feature phone, and finally get into iPhone. So there's a, there's a lot of fe there's a lot of factors here. The fact that there was four million units in like in no time whatsoever, that's a little bit too many for me to simply think that. Uh, Siri and a brand new camera was enough to get people to say yes. Now, finally, now that now there's finally voice interaction. That's what I was waiting for for the iPhone. I've got to have this phone. I, uh, you know, I also think it's probable that uh, there were a lot of 3GS and 3G users yeah. who finally upgraded, who hadn't upgraded to four for whatever reason. Maybe they listened to yeah. consumer reports. Well, I don't know. They were fairly. I mean, they were fairly informal surveys. But I think you had uh, uh, Piper Jaffray analyst Gene Munster and somebody else. Maybe. UBS analyst Maynard Dom, I can't remember, talking to people online. And what, he, what they were saying was that it was somewhere between 75 and 77% of the people that they talked to were upgrading. Aha. Uh -huh. So, I mean, a lot of people were... Upgrading, upgrading for the, even from iPhone 4. Well, it didn't say. I mean, that's the problem. They actually, I don't understand if you're going to stand around in line, why don't you ask some really important questions? Like, they didn't talk about how many people were going from Android to iPhone. They talked about device makers, generally speaking. Right. So they know that it was this many people going from LG to the iPhone or this many people going from Motorola to the iPhone. And so you can sort of say some of those are going to be Android upgraders, but a lot of them are just going to be people who are going from, you know, dumb phone or flip phones. I'm actually really curious to see what they say about... Um, iPhone sales on tonight's earnings call because the weird thing to me is I mean we all talk tech right there are so many people who just didn't even seem to realize that we hadn't gotten a new iPhone over the summer <laughs> and that we were about to get a new iPhone people were just still going to it's Apple the, stores and buying phones so yeah. I mean I'm wondering if even going into what we thought was going to be an iPhone 5 or an iPhone 4s or an iPhone Supra or whatever we thought it was going to be called I'm wondering if even going into that we still saw a record number of iPhone sales last quarter yeah I bet we Seems did like it could happen I bet we yeah. did um, well, and, it, and it looks like, I mean, I, uh, I, you know, I was tweeting out to, uh, and, uh, as to like who upgraded from the, you know, the 3GS versus the 4, who upgraded right. 4, are you happy with the 4S, was it right. worth it? And the, the vast majority of the people that responded were actually going from the 4 to the 4S, and, and for them, you know, it was Siri and the camera. You know that, that you know that, that you know they they really wanted to to have Siri and, they, and the camera made a big difference. And I have to say that the, the, the camera does mean that I mean this is the end of the point and shoot. I mean, it this, is. This it's good is, enough now. Yeah. It's good enough now. Um, uh, and, you know, with all the software, too, available for it, that makes it That's much more compelling thing. than a point-and-shoot. Yeah. And, you know, we made fun of, we mocked Apple announcing the Cards app, and I still mm -hmm. kind of mock yeah. that. But that's the kind of thing that ties in so nicely to this good yeah. camera. Uh, yeah. And I think I probably will send some cards with that Cards app. Next trip. I, next, I put my, my mom's trip. address in there. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think That's I might. That's the thing. You have, to, you have to go back and get everybody's address now. <laughs> <laughs> there are two or three things. I can't remember what the other one was, but there was something else that I wanted. Oh, I was setting an alert reminder. I, I now know the address of my grocery store. I've never known what the address of my grocery store was, but they also have a pharmacy, and there's a prescription that has to be filled. And so now I've set a reminder uh -huh. next time I'm there because I always forget. Isn't that a nice of, feature? That GPS reminder says, uh, you're well, near the store again. Yeah. Pick up your, pick up your uh, fungicide. And you're there. Exactly. Yeah. How did you know? <laughs>
<laughs> I'm sorry, Ken. Uh, <laughs> didn't mean to out you there. Uh, so, uh, yeah, I, somebody in the chat room said, you guys just don't understand how people buy phones. And it may be. I mean, we really live in a bubble. We are not. You're, I mean, we're all oh, no, sitting here. We on. probably all have several phones. Hold on. I, I, I think I'm actually setting a trend for how I'm going to be on MacBreak Weekly from now on. Last time, uh, Lion had come out, and I did not have Lion yet. You uh, still I don't, don't have, have one? one? I don't have an iPhone 4S. I'm not eligible for an upgrade until later this year, and I don't have, I don't have, I am the person that the person in the chat room is talking about. I understand <laughs> how people buy phones. I'm a little annoyed, actually, because when we went from the iPhone 3G to the 3GS, yeah, speed, okay, better camera, okay, but I didn't feel like I actually had to have it to understand, you right. know. It's sort of like when we went from the iPad to the iPad 2. I felt like, okay, well, if I really want to understand the iPad 2, I'm going to have to go ahead and get one because the camera does change enough. But just having a better camera, just having a little bit more speed. Yeah, I and by the way, go from the 3G it, to the 3GS. it's underclocked at 800 megahertz. And I, I know people are saying it seems a lot faster. It doesn't seem that much. It's not so much faster that you're going to go, oh, my poor slow iPhone 4. No. Well, it, it depends, on the, and it depends <laughs> on the situation. Uh, iPhone, uh, iOS 5 sped up the camera app for all iPhone Ooh, models. That's but true. When, you, this... when you're on, I mean, when I was shooting that video uh, on the con floor, I'm just not used to the idea of shooting five minutes of video, tapping yeah. stop, and then a second later, yeah. the iPhone's like, okay, want to shoot some more? Yeah. Because uh, I, I was shooting side by side with, with the iPhone 4 and the iPhone 4S, and I'd tap stop at, the both, at both times. The iPhone 4S would be ready to go again immediately, whether mm -hmm. it was a still or a video, but a particular video. iPhone 4 was just watch it just do nothing for almost a full minute sometimes while it gets, writes the file and gets ready to shoot again. So there, there, it, it does feel zippier. I don't think that... Uh, CPU performance is uh, is as important on a phone as it is on a desktop because there's so few situations right. where you really it, they're really doing that kind of number crunching. But it I'm really let, is. I'm gonna let it, you, it, it, it comes through the speech synthesis uh, as opposed to features. And I apologize, Kent, because I interrupted because I know where you were going with your. Oh, I'm sorry. Which was well, camera Siri didn't need it, speed didn't need, but there was something that did that you really do need because <laughs> you can't test it with an iPhone 4s. It's Siri. Yeah. Siri, right. I mean, and there's so much talk about it. I mean, the cool thing is I'm, I'm, I will come across people who have it, I'm sure, and I will get to try it. And there's no shortage of stuff online about it because it's such a neat feature. Um, but well, yeah, most of it's, I don't, most I don't of it's like trivial. Most of it's trivial <laughs> use, you know. I want to bury a body. I'm horny. Right. I'm in, I need to buy some drugs, that kind of thing. I have to admit, in, in four days, it's become like a core part of what I, I don't text anything anymore. I, I, don't, I use like, it a lot. Like, I just sit there and just go, you know, yeah. text, you know, text Doug. And then I go, okay. But I, I like it better if you say tell Doug. It's just oh, yeah, so I imperative. I didn't, I didn't even mm -hmm. tell Doug. Didn't know I works. Tell. Yeah. It doesn't, oh, the only thing, my, what, <laughs> I just love just saying tell, tell yeah. Alex I'm going to be late. I just love doing that. Yeah. <laughs> and it says, okay. Well, and, and the, uh, the one of the things that, that's a little, a little known, it definitely feels like Dragon. So if you've used Dragon software, you know, you can put all your punctuation in as well. So can you, you say can, period, question mark. You can say mark. period, question yep. mark, comma, quotes. Can you say bang, hash bang? Uh, I don't know. I haven't tried that I have before. to try that. But I've done like open, open parenthesis, clo close parenthesis. You know, like, like all of that stuff can be, you know, put in. Uh, it is easier, I have to say, to input like text messages if you use the... Um, when you open up the keyboard and use the little yes. microphone, because I have to admit, when you say, when you tell Siri, I want to text somebody, she cuts you off so fast. Like if you have right. to think for a second about what you want to say, she immediately that's, just goes, okay, that's enough. One thing Apple does very differently from Android. Now, it, it, admittedly, Android has these voice cans, commands and voice actions, and I have used them. I'm one of the few, because I, I, I always tell people, use them, use them, they're great, because mm -hmm. I love them. The, I, I do believe the recognition is better, but that's one significant difference. Siri will, if you use the keyboard microphone, will patiently wait for you to say, I'm done. Right. And, and can go on and on and on. And Android will not do that. Android will stop as soon as you pause, often in, in a, in a, inopportunely. Well, and, and the other thing is, is that if you have pages on, on, uh, on your iPhone... You can sit there and just hit it and, and then just dictate an entire, you know, I mean, you can just keep on dictating like you would with, with Dragon. And then when you look at the iCloud, then you can have it available on yeah. something else to clean it up and, and do anything else you want with it. It's pretty, you know, it's one of those things where we talk about, and I know Andy especially talks about a lot, the, the subtle fit and finish. He's talking to Siri right now. The subtle fit and finish. I saw you do that. <laughs> no, no, I was just, I was, go ahead. I was. The subtle fit and finish that um, Apple adds to something is enough uh, to me to put me over the top in using this. I used it on Android. And I still use it on Android. But it's just a little bit, but just enough a little yeah. bit better. It's that I use. I really it's just it it, well. it's, it's really some some basic things. I'm still shocked that the uh, that Android speech synthesis is so 
awful. It's uh, Siri will say, "I okay, I've scheduled you an appointment for 2 p.m. Tuesday to have, have lunch with Leo." And Android is still. Well, there is one thing that Android has it, that that Siri does not have. You can change the voices on Android, and you can put better voices on Android. Yeah, but why would you ship it with a piece of crap? Well, I'm sorry to, I'm it's sorry a safe to space, way, but, probably, I would be on my but, guess, but I don't know. Yeah, well, whatever. No, I, uh, I, 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 just, I, just I, and think, I think that's phone-specific, by the way, manufacturer-specific. But uh, SVox is a tool that you can add uh, and will allow you to add other voices. This is, this is the, the other side of the equation, as long as I'm going to be fair. Yes, Fit and Finish is better on Apple, but it's much more restrictive. You can't, you know, you're stuck with... The voice they give you. But I think you can't that change it to the British voice. Apparently, mm -hmm. though, if you change it to the uh, foreign language voices, it doesn't it doesn't do as well or as much. Right. It's very interesting. Well, I think that but by, it, by staying focused on on one thing right, rather than making why. it available, it's 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 easier to make it more stable. It's easier to make it more. Stable, they're probably you know, concomitant yeah. features. Also, yeah. yeah. Also, also, that's it, this is one of the reasons why they're calling it a beta. One of the things that is explicitly on their to do list is to expand it, uh, the international reach uh, and the international compatibility of Siri. So it, it, that's if, if there's a if there's a reason why Apple has done this kind of unprecedented thing. You think of the last time that I think the last time they actually released a beta into the public was the first public beta of OS 10 at 10.0. Uh, so the idea that they're saying we got something really cool, we think that it, it, it's useful as it exists right now, but we can't figure out how people are going to want to use it until lots of people start using it. So if the, for for the first six months, it spends a lot of time saying, I don't know what you mean by do these pants make my butt look big? Would you like me to search on the web for it now? Then that's the sort of thing that's going to be the first three or four months. Oh, I mean, there's so much. New voices, SDKs, you know, certainly they should know other apps should be able to work with Siri and vice versa. But I, and, and I do believe that all of this will be fixed once they come out of beta. Apple's, I can't yeah. remember Apple doing a public beta on a product like this before. Wasn't, right. it, was, it, didn't, it wasn't as big, but wasn't FaceTime beta when it came out? Did they call it beta? I thought so. I think they might have. Okay. So that would be the other, the other time. I mean, it's not a common yeah, thing for Apple. Unlike Google, it's not something Apple does all the time. And I think that there's a very important message that they're saying, sending by using that term. For instance, I think this will come out on the iPhone 4 and the iPad 2. There's no technical reason why it can't. Well, I think they want to, I think, oh, there's a, there is a technical reason they can't? Yeah, it, it really does require that kind of uh, uh, dual core processing power. Well, the iPad uh, 2 it, is faster than the iPhone 4. Uh, right. But it, well, it can't. So it might. Uh, when you said the iPhone four, I mean, it might come. Uh, you could see it coming out for the for uh, for the iPad two. You could even see it coming for desktops. But iPhone, any any, any previous iPhone, I think that's never that's not going to happen. The Siri app worked fine on the iPhone three G. Well, because it wasn't it wasn't doing exactly the same thing, was it? Well, it's all server based. Uh, it's my suspicion that they could, they will put it at least on the iPhone four and the iPad two. Uh, we'll okay. see. I, I don't think that there's any technical reason they can't. I think there's a server reason they can't. As, as we all noted in the first day, when everybody was asking Siri how to bury a body, uh, <laughs> it wasn't as responsive as it has been later. Thank goodness. What about the... Um, I, uh, I hate doing stuff like this because I can't point to who I heard it from, but I heard from a guy who talked to a guy at Apple, and that's just, you know... That's good. Take it for we'll what it's it. worth in that, we'll in that it. respect. Um, what they were saying was that the uh, microphone... And and some of the oh. and some of the processing that they put into the iPhone 4s uh, was the reason that you wouldn't one of the reasons that you wouldn't get it in the iPhone 4, and that indicated to me that it would also be a reason that you wouldn't get it in the iPad 2, right. which is kind of a bummer if that ends up being the case because you're right it mm. seems like it would be able to do it, but of course if it seemed like it would be able to do it, why wouldn't it go ahead and be able to do it now? Is is Apple's mm. Siri noticeably better than the uh, app Siri app? I didn't use the Siri app, so I don't I, know. yeah I know I used it I like, used it for a while on the side. It? It's uh, yeah, okay. they're, they're two different things. Okay. It Go is true it. that the Siri app did more. You could make reservations and so forth. But I think the voice recognition, maybe not as good. And, of course, Siri, uh, as the chat room is quick to tell me on the uh, iPhone 4S, does use uh, a lot of the iPhone. It's, it's not all server side. You, it, some of it does work when you're yeah. offline. I'm, I, I'll, all I can say is that uh, my understanding of it is that there is nothing in the iPhone 4S that was put in specifically to support Siri. Okay. So okay, but does that, does that not mean that other Siri. things? Does that not mean that other things weren't improved anyway? Though I mean, even if it wasn't put in right, specifically exactly. for Siri, they're not things right. that would make Siri work better Maybe. for it. Right. Right. I mean, like the A5 processor obviously wasn't put in there specifically for it, but the A4 is not going to cut it, right? Well, we don't know. I mean, and Apple's not forthcoming. It'd be yeah, my. That's it's my best guess <laughs> that they will offer it on uh, 
on at least the iPad 2, which is perfectly capable. In fact, is it faster? Well, I, I wonder if it's even de an iPad 2 design feature. I, when I, the more that I use Siri, the more that I understand that it's not just cool voice recognition that could be done on a desktop, could be done on a tablet, could be done on anything. It's really designed so that when, you, when you're stuck with a device that has these really terrible little virtual keyboards, you want to find ways yeah. so that you don't have to use that keyboard. That's true. So I think that it, it, well, I, well I, I certainly don't doubt that it'll expand in other it might expand at other devices. I think this was a specifically an iPhone uh, based solution. I, I think I would, I would see it on the uh, if, if I were to make a bet, if they made a, an iPod touch with the right processing power, I could see this rolling out to the iPod touch go. before anything else. Of course, then you have the problem of not, not having persistent 3G, but well, By the way, it's I not mean, the serious... microphone, as somebody pointed out. You can use he uh, you know, headsets yeah. and Bluetooth. Oh, that's a good point. So it's that's not the microphone. Point. The thing is that Siri is sort of uh, the next big thing for Apple, right? I mean, you say, well, it's perfect for the phone. It's not perfect for everything else. I mean, is is it not the beginning of I can talk to my computer and I don't have to be near my computer? There's been a lot computer? of speculation yeah. that this is OS ten bound, absolutely. Yeah, well, and, and I think that one of the things that when you start... And wouldn't you want that? Well, when you yes. start... When you start uh, using Siri and you start doing a lot of dictation, you know, and I, I've done a lot of dictation with Dragon for a long time, but the, uh, you know, being able to use this in pages on your Mac, on your iPad, on your, you know, is pretty um, compelling. You know, it, it is a little frustrating that it's only available on the phone at the moment. Maybe my phone will talk to my computer. Maybe my maybe that the is, phone becomes the base unit for all of this. Who knows? That is so awesome. You were talking about something that's been out for five days, and you're like, I can't believe this is only on my phone. <laughs> <laughs> you're, you're talking to Alex Lindsay here, my friend. No. <laughs> it was like, well, it, it, it really was, adopters I, it was a, got nothing on him. Yeah. <laughs> well, like, yeah, I'm, yesterday, 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 I had um, as a good example. Yesterday, I got food poisoning, so I was, um, I was in, I was not in a good condition yesterday and i'm laying on my bed responding to everyone's text messages just going text the blah 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 and i just kept on going you know and i was like oh my gosh this is great you know i mean not, it, it wasn't great nice. that i was laying in bed and yeah but if you can't move series for you but it was like you know it, it was uh it was quite a um <laughs> Let, let's take a little break we're going to talk like, more oh, about uh, iphone 4s there's lots more to say of course uh os mac os ken is here uh ken ray great to have you ken once again thanks mac os ken dot com for his great show which he does every single day, or at Mac OS Ken on Twitter. From the Pixel Core, Mr. Alex Lindsay, pixelcore.com, for that guild of multimedia artists living, working, and breathing together. Did I say breathing? I meant breeding. <laughs> and they, uh, <laughs> <laughs> Did you say what? And, uh, no, they're not. I'm sorry. It's mostly just online, so there you go. Pixelcore.tv for the podcast. Actually, you do a live thing every Thursday, uh, pixelcore.com slash live. Mac Break uh, Studio Live is going to be this Thursday. And that's uh, Brent uh, Bynes going to do something. Um, right? We are going to be, I think Brent might be on it. We're going to be, of course, we have our two trainers. We have uh, Steve Martin and, oh. uh, and Mark Spencer. Oh, that was great. So you can do that again? Yeah, they're going to be up there. So, so it's. Uh, oh, that was so great with the. Uh, OS 10, uh, yeah. the new um, with the new Final uh, Cut, Final and, Cut yeah. yeah, and so they're going to be they're going to be we actually show show people kind of behind the scenes of us actually doing Mac Break Studios, and so they can really get Neat. a sense of it this Thursday. So that's Thursday at 6 p.m. And Andy Anako, whose giant giant review of the iPhone 4s, <laughs> I like the dog by the way, will appear in the Chicago Sun Times or has it appeared already in the Chicago? Uh, it's, uh, it was scheduled for Monday. I decided that I need a little bit more of a deep soak to understand what was going on. So uh, it's going to be uh, hitting probably Thursday. No urgency. We are ready now to read the deep thoughts of Andy and Notko <laughs> on the Chicago Sun Times. As soon as, soon as I have one, I'll be able to write one down. That's you know, I don't want to say anything, but I've been talking to my car for some time. Right. Actually, my whole life. <laughs> but it finally resp starts responding when I got the, I mostly yell at my when I got the new Ford Sync. We want to welcome Ford back to uh, Mac Break Weekly. We're big Ford fans. My Mustang right outside. Uh, and now they've added some really neat new features. You can read about all the new technologies uh, in Fords uh, at Ford.com slash technology. The Sync with My Ford Touch, where you talk to your car. The voice commands on Sync are, are really fantastic. Very similar to Siri. It doesn't talk back to you yet. I think it's just a matter of time before it talks back to you, however. Everybody's now paying close attention to this. The uh, new electric vehicles are amazing. I can't wait to get my hands on that Focus Electric. Um, it's, this, is, this is really cool. You can now turn your Ford into a Wi-Fi access point. The USB port on the Ford, you plug in one of those uh, 3G USB cards into it, and it actually adds Wi-Fi connectivity to your car, which is awfully cool as you're driving around to be able to tell the kids, use your iPads, 
to use your phone, to use to surf the net, to answer emails. Not while you're driving, please. But for the passengers, it's really fantastic. Wi-Fi connected connectivity built into the car to put the antennas in. So uh, it works better than any uh, hotspot or MiFi. It's it's throughout the car. Really fantastic. Up to five people can uh, share that Wi-Fi connection. Just so many reasons to take a look at a Ford. We were just talking about that the other day. Uh, this is a car company that has reinvented itself and is creating amazing products. Amazing products. They're really a consumer electronics company now. I drove a Ford Edge when I was on uh, vacation, and I was playing with the My Ford Touch, and I just love it. Things like, it's little things, it's kind of like Apple, the little things like, um, you know, when you turn on the cruise control with the My Ford Touch, you actually set the miles per hour. You're not just kind of like looking at the speedometer and saying, yeah, remember that. You, can actually, you actually go, do, 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 yeah. I want to go speed limit. Do, 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 I'm going to go eight miles over the speed do, do, do. And it actually shows you what you're, I just, was, you know, it's little things like that I just love. You know, it was one of the things that I, I uh, one, I, it sounds, sounds like an odd thing to talk about, but you know, the, the, the GM bailout I thought was a little bit of a, a, you know, undermined Ford because Ford was has been way ahead. I mean, they weren't hurt. always you know, have they been were, way. They ahead. were way ahead. Yeah. They were able to. You they know, never took any bailout money. Trouble, they didn't need to no. because they were because they were they already ahead of that. They were already yeah. thinking about those things. And so, by the way, the Wi-Fi is in built. Of course, it's a secure Wi-Fi hotspot. So you, know, <laughs> I love that too. Because you're driving by, you're driving by. <laughs> nobody can use your Wi-Fi. I as, just as imagine as my iPhone up front. Like grabbing onto <laughs> people's Fords as they drive by. I just think it's so great. Take a look. Go to this is a great site if you're into tech. Ford.com slash technology. You can see all the different uh, things that they're doing to make their cars the best performing, the smartest, the most safe and secure, and the most fun to drive. Ford.com slash technology. We thank them for their support of Mac Break Weekly. So we've all done, and I'm not even going to talk about it, the silly Siri commands. But I thought it'd be fun to ask each of you... Uh, how you use Siri. We already know you use it for text messages, Alex Lindsay. And emails. And emails. And um, blog posts. Well, I mean... So you're using the dictation The like dictation, well, it, it works typing. just like Dragon. I mean, you know, right. so the thing yeah. is, is that it's, it is... Uh, and because I'm, I'm well-trained on it, I mean, because I've been using Dragon, I sit there and go, okay, blah, 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 blah comma, blah, 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 period. You know, space... Are know, there like, things so, that you are disappointed with? Um... Well, the funny, funny thing is, given that Twitter is incorporated, you know what it's I can't so do weird is that go you can't tweet, tweet, tweet this, yeah. and I can't, and it won't do that yet. And I, I'm not. We I'm do not know, sure. we do know the trick. By the way, you don't have to text us. Yeah. Four zero four zero four, but you can't call it Twitter apparently, or it will get mad at you. Yeah, it won't. You have do to it. say Mister Tweet. Mis yeah, something else or something. Or so, or. so it is. It is kind of an. I, I felt like that was kind of an odd. Tell Mister Tweet. I'm doing Mac Break Weekly. Then it'll tweet for you. Right. So and, weird. And I said, the other thing that, that, that bothers me a bit is the whole process of it um, cutting me off. You know, so if I don't, if I'm doing it, like if I, if I get a text message and I go respond, and then I say whatever I'm going to say, if I wait for a, a second to think about what I was going to say, um, she cuts me off. Yeah. And puts it in there, and then it's a bit of a, I yeah, haven't figured out how you to don't, fix don't that. Like that. But it, don't, it doesn't do that with a keyboard. Uh, no, not with a keyboard. It'll sit there and wait until you're done. Andy, your favorite f feature, how have you been using Siri? Uh, I love the way that you can just use it incidentally. Uh, I, I, again, it's it's right there next to my desk, and anytime there's something that I just it's just a quick question, like a math problem, or uh, what's the what's the current weather someplace, or uh, even a quick web search that uh, that Wolfram Alpha is probably going to be able to find for me. Uh, that's the sort of incidental use. Uh, and also this, the, the reminder system, I never used really a to-do list or a reminder because it's just never been this handy. This, this, it's, it's always been way too analog a thing in my head. I just want, oh, just remember the next time I'm at Home Depot, pick up light bulbs. I don't want, okay, ta open the task manager. Okay, add this to the personal items list. Okay, now what's the context of, but is this a home thing? Is it a, I just simply remind me to, be, remind me to pick up light bulbs the next time I'm at, I'm at Home Depot, it's done. Yeah. So, yeah. Really any struggling. disappointments? Any anything you'd like to see uh, changed or improved? The only dis the only disappointment is that it's uh, it it's it's not to the point where you it always works the way that you think it will, and it will never work the way you don't think it will. Uh, the great thing about most iPhone stuff and most Mac stuff is that it really is consistent. If there isn't a feature, then it just doesn't... You know, the only things that really don't work are the features that they don't put in. So there are times when I'll pick up Siri and I'll, uh, I'll, I'll activate Siri thinking that, of course, it's going to be able to find out, get, tell me what the spot price of, uh, of silver is today. But I had to figure out the right way to ask that question yeah. to make, make sure it was not going to be a web search. Uh, and it really is... It, it's. I don't know whether that's a case of... 
it, there's so much AI involved that it really is like talking to a person where you might to, you might be able to tell somebody that you know for about uh, for about 10 weeks, oh, give me that blue thing that we always use when we cook steak. Uh, and they'll know exactly what you're talking about. It's actually more efficient than go to the third cupboard, look for the third shelf, look for the implement that has the three like sort of raised grill tines on it and bring it over. <laughs> you know, I think it'll work. Uh, yeah. Yeah. Um, I can oh, oh, Mac OS Ken. What, you're you're how are, well? You're not using Siri. I guess well, you're I'm, left I'm, out of I'm this. I'm using it to hate my iPhone four. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, one of the things, one of the, the interesting things, by the way, that I got a lot of comments on is a lot of people that upgraded from the iPhone four to the iPhone iPhone four S. They b between Gazelle and other things, they got almost the same amount of money back for their iPhone four. Yeah, they Gazelle pretty much gets you the two hundred bucks. So it was almost it was like a fifty dollar or some some of them made a profit, which on, re really on reflects the, the, the continued perceived value of the iPhone. 4 for itself right. you know uh, they couldn't they couldn't give you that kind of money if they couldn't sell it for that kind of money right so uh, that's actually uh, that's actually good news Th these are these are phones that are very desirable apparently and uh, you know even the iPhone 4 still has some value although I don't know how much longer it uh, it will right. I like the fact that you can uh, instead of pressing the button you can hold when you've got the screen on you can hold Siri up here's a this is a funny let yeah. me let me uh, this is a Siri is a uh, video let's play this video just to give people a sense of Siri if you haven't seen this it's from Mac most Hello, Siri. Hi, Master. You can tell it to call you whatever you want. How are you doing? I'm, I'm gorgeous. I am well. Testing. Is this thing on? <laughs> Do you know any jokes? Two iPhones walk into a bar. I gotta wonder if that's a, it's a, that's a little nod to Gizmo. Testing. Yeah. I can hear you. Tell me a joke. By the way, most I of these can. canned answers. I always forget there the are line. several. Yeah. What is mm. the meaning of life? She does not like references to how. Life, the condition that distinguishes animals and plants she'll, from she'll inorganic matter. She'll also answer matter, 42. Including the capacity for growth, reproduction, functional She says, she makes some funny jokes too about writing a death. long play with no meaning. Tell me a joke. Master, I don't really know any good jokes. I don't like None. being called Master. In I fact, think Gorgeous is better. You say Fu Manchu. What is the meaning of life? <laughs> it's funny. To think about questions like this. Knock, knock. I asked her to open the pod bay doors. Yeah. She said it was very knock, knock. Yes. To ask an intelligent assistant. Who's there? Master. Master who? Master, I don't do knock, knock jokes. What is the meaning of life? 42. Ah, there you go. Testing. You're coming through loud and clear. What is the meaning of life? All right, you get the idea. I, yeah. I think we've all, all seen these. Suggests it's chocolate. Uh, many, many times. But this is a good eight-minute video, which I will not play all <laughs> of if you uh, if you want to see it. What do you call, What do you have your uh, iPhone 4S call you? What does Siri call you, Andy? I'm sticking with Andy. Really? I don't. I don't. I, I don't feel as though I need an inanimate object to use vainglorious terminology to inflate my ego. Well, apparently Alex and I do. Or <laughs> at least I do. <laughs> Uh, you know, the un it's, it's, it's more like it's more like I don't want anyone to overhear me saying, Do Lord Anatko, master of all he surveys, creator there's, of there's worlds, the destroyer of all. <laughs> there's the negative, and you can see what it does on your uh, contact card on the iPhone. It actually puts in quotes below your name the name you've chosen. And so you <laughs> right. see it says Leo Laporte, quote, gorgeous, quote. So I'm going to be referred to that. by my Klingon name. <laughs> <laughs> Um, if you had an iPhone 4S, Ken, what would you have Siri call you? I don't know. You, uh, you, uh, I'm sort of stumped now. <laughs> probably, probably some kind of. It'd probably be some kind of superhero, either that or reach back to mythology. I don't know which. Not Zeus. Is, what was Zeus's dad? Zeus's dad, Thor. I don't know. That's no, awesome. Odin. That's a whole. That's a no, whole different, uh, different. galaxy. That's a, that's a different mythology. Did, did, yeah. did Zeus have a dad? I thought he was the father of yeah. all things. Well, no, there were the. I mean, weren't the Titans? Wait a minute. That's why you have you know who's going to know? Right? <laughs> what am I oh, thinking? Siri would know that. Yes. <laughs> Let's just. Who is Zeus's dad? If you ask it, who's your daddy? It gives you some funny answers. No, it's. I, don't know I think it was. I think it was Cronus. Cronus actually, I think Cronus, Cronus was the father of father Zeus. Father of time. Yeah. Chat room is faster idea. than Siri. <laughs> Who is Zeus's dad? It said, I don't know, Liz's dad. 
I don't know who as used as his father is. Oh, well. Uh, Ned, just, don't worry. Just, think about how powerful, just think about how powerful Siri would be if it was connected to something like the Mechanical Turk. Where yeah. there was some sort of algorithm Human. that sort of sort sort of went sort of went through some sort of system, kind of like right. the, the 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 poll of the audience on who wants to be a millionaire, where it goes out on the list of anybody who gets like one penny for every correct answer. It will feedback if it gets like X number of answers that are agreed upon by random Ooh, people. It figures out that want. okay, then I bet that that is the correct answer to Zeus's dad. But it'll say according to according to the according to a bunch of random strangers. This is why is. an SDK is important. This is why Apple. Well, and it's not traditionally how Apple does things, but I would love it if Apple would open this up so that you could, in fact, have an app, for instance. It would be a Mechanical Turk app, or you could even tell Siri. You can't even launch apps with Siri right now, which is kind of... I think, I think it just really sure. is. I think, I, think, I think there's a psychological aspect here that we all know that Siri is an AI. It's just a piece of software. It's a nice feature on a phone. But it really plugs into that part of our brain that recognizes a specific personality and how we trust that one person and how we communicate with that one person. Right. And if we, I think this is a case where we really do need a curation so that things that, things that Siri can say back and answers that they can provide are never really variable, that they're consistent and that they're basically being funneled through even if it's just one company that decides that we're going to trust these three sources for navigation information, we're going to trust these four sources for movie information or, or movie show times and stuff like that. So I, I'm not sure if, if there were a free-for-all API where I'm, I'm suddenly getting answers from the novelty Valley Girl Speak generator of, uh, on uh, what's, a, what's, what's, the, what's the safe cooking temperature for a steak. I says, oh, my God, I think it must be like 100 degrees or something. Oh, my God. Yeah. Like, really? Well, oh, and okay. I think that also, I think that one of the things that Apple has consistently done is do things very slowly. They introduce a new feature, and then they're going to let it, you know, stabilize and figure it out. I mean, we didn't have applications on our iPhone when we first got it, you know, other than the ones that Apple gave us. And then they slowly, you know, open that up, and they slowly open these things up in a way that they can control it. And, uh, you know, and, and try to maintain some kind of uh, quality, you know, assurances. And so, so I, think that, I think that what we're seeing right now is a very, very, very early version of Siri. You know, and I think this Plus, is going to get much, much bigger, much more complex. Plus, if we buy the idea that this could actually be where Apple is hoping to, you know, head things, not just for the iPhone, but for everything else that they do. Um, I mean, building that trust. I mean, getting it to a point where people are very comfortable with it, and even people who you know don't have an iPhone 4s like myself. I mean, I I know from what everybody has said so far that it becomes a very useful, very you know integral part of the way that they're using their phones, and so that's going to be a great keynote when they say, and finally, mm. all of that that you know at Siri mm -hmm. uh, on your iPhone is now available on your iPad or is now available on your Mac right. or now, or available, is now on available in your fridge. I mean, it's right. I mean, it's, it it feels like this is the beginning of. This is this is that this is the way that they have built uh, sort of the iTunes ecosystem and, and and the ecosystem that they built over the past few years. This is the first time that we're going to see Siri, but you're not going to have to have an iPhone to use Siri. Well, and you might I mean, not I even know when you're going to guess, but next couple of years maybe. You might not even need an Apple product because you've got to believe that everybody and their brother is immediately jumping on this bandwagon. In fact, Microsoft, even before this, had a, announced an Xbox TV application that lets you talk to your TV through Microsoft Connect. Well, and I'm, I, I wouldn't be surprised if Apple, the Apple TV 3, you know, has Siri built into it. Where you you can still say, believe in that TV. No, 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 no I'm talking about oh, the TV. TV. I'm thing, talking about just, yeah. just like, even if, if you just have a well, little and, box. And don't you think now we're going to, tonight we're going to cover uh, Google's uh, Nexus Prime, or Samsung's Nexus Prime announcement, Google's ice cream sandwich announcement. Um, uh, in fact, if you want, if you're interested in that, uh, uh, we'll be doing that tonight at uh, 5.30? Uh, 7 p.m. Pacific. 7 p.m. Pacific time. Uh, with the All About Android team, Jason Howell, uh, Eileen Rivera, and uh, Gino Trapani will join them uh, covering that because that is going to be streamed live. And so one thing that's been interesting is there's been precious little about Ice Cream Sandwich. And wouldn't it be interesting if Google... You know, which already has this voice com command feature, uh, came up with something similar to Siri. I wouldn't be surprised at all. They have a very large, active voice recognition team. Um, they have a huge data set. This is one thing Mike Elgin mentioned. He said, you're going to love Siri, but you're going you're to be buying it from Google soon because Google has more data about us and what we do even than Apple. Well, I think it just depends on what, where Apple, where, where they're sourcing it. If they're sourcing it, which we think that they're sourcing it from Nuance, if Apple has sourced well, that's the Nuance, dictation. Talking, Nuance is very good. Yeah, 20 years of experience. Yeah. You know, 20, 30 well, years of experience. Well, and, you know, the guy who runs Google's effort started Nuance. Okay, there you go. So it's not that Google is, not, is out in the cold, and they have a large data set of voices mm -hmm. that they've been collecting for a long time.
Right. So, but more importantly, I think that what makes Siri intelligent is the is the database of information behind it. There, I think Apple was brilliant, brilliant to enlist Wolfram Alpha, yeah, uh, because that's when you can say, you know, yeah. what is what is split my bill four ways and add a fifteen percent tip, and, and and Siri doesn't know that, but Siri asks Wolfram Alpha, and you get the answer, and it's fantastic. Yeah. Yeah, it's 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 incredible the way that it organizes the information that it feeds back to you. At Comic Con, I was asking questions like, "Who is Green Lantern?" And it's not smart enough to say, "Oh, well, Green Lantern has been at at, at, in, at various eras, Hal Jordan, blah 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 blah." Uh, but it, it will, the table information will have in line number two the names that have been associated with that. It's just really uncanny the way yeah, it works. Yeah, I think I think that everybody agrees that this is maybe not. Let me pose this and let you agree or disagree. This is, we will look back and say, this is when we started talking to computers and they started talking back. And people will be frustrated because they'll say that, of course, Google's been doing this for the last, uh, you know, the Android's been doing Just this for the last Just as uh, year iPod wasn't the first MP3, Apple's iPhone wasn't the first mm -hmm. smartphone, the Apple II wasn't the first computer. Of course, that's true. Yeah. Google is Google's people. pretty close. Google's 70% of the way there. Apple doesn't really create new things. They just make the things that are sitting around work, work better. better. Yeah. It feels like that's a safe thing to say, though, because 4 million people started doing it this weekend. I mean, you're right. Google has been doing it for a while. Other right. things have done it for a while. But 4 million people started doing this one thing this past weekend. Yeah. And the True. thing is, is, we've been prepped for this. I mean, we have been, for the last 40 years, we've been watching sci-fi shows where everyone's talking to their computers. <laughs> so, As everybody yeah. knows, nothing happens. No, no new inventions happen in technology unless it happens in sci-fi first, because that's what <laughs> inspires... The engineers to make it happen. I, I don't know what's yeah. gone on, gone wrong with flying cars, but yeah, I, I was disappointed to find out that Siri doesn't have any joke response to T. Oh, gray. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We have tried all of those. Yeah, it's, well, at, at this point, everything's been tried. <laughs> don't you think that the, that the the fact that she has so many funny responses to stuff is part of what makes her personal? You yes. know, like you know, there, there's something about that that really gets you attached to, you know, uh, you know, it, it makes her appear real, you know, in, in some yeah. odd way. It was not. It was not a throwaway thing. I think it was carefully calculated mm -hmm. to get you right. used to talking to her. Yeah. Also, also that they, it it patches into that thing I was saying earlier about how you really do identify it as a. Per it, it hooks into that software inside your brain yes. that says, "Here's what I, here's the skills I use when I'm talking to a person," because uh, there was uh, when I was testing when I was using it uh, the other day. Uh, it asked for a clarification. It, 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 uh, I said, schedule something, something for some day. I said, okay, uh, for what day is that? And I found myself saying, oh, sorry, uh, Tuesday. I, said, I just said, I'm sorry to a piece <laughs> yeah. of software yeah. just because that's the sort of mode you're in. Yeah. Well, very interesting. Uh, and I'm sure we'll be talking a lot more and talking to Siri a lot more about this in the weeks uh, to come. And who knows, maybe this time next year, Siri will be a, a regular on the show. <laughs> She's kind of. Can you get Siri and Watson on for the she same sounds, episode? Actually, she sounds hot. That'd be awesome. Now, have you switched, Have you switched over to iCloud? Well, let's talk about iCloud. That's next oh. on the show. Our next topic, uh, as we continue Mac Break Weekly, iCloud is a bigger story in some ways. I mean, it really is changing not just your phone, but all of your Macintosh stuff, including your iPad. It took me all Saturday afternoon to do that change, <sighs> and it can be a nightmare. <laughs> and your and your Macintosh systems. We'll talk about it. Before we do, let's talk a little bit about Citrix and those folks who uh, at GoToMeeting, you know, it's really interesting to watch how Citrix is taking uh, video. We're, we've all gotten used to having video, you know, with Skype and, uh, and so forth, and put it into their online meeting program and made it such a great product. You know, they're coming at it in the other direction. They started with screen sharing uh, for online meetings, and then these other companies with telepresence, like Cisco, started in the other direction with cameras and, and so forth. But I have to say... For $50, less than $50 a month, this is the best solution out there. GoToMeeting has now added HD faces, so you get both screen sharing, the best out there, online meeting audio, and now high-def video. More and more of the people you meet with have their cameras right there on their computer, have that capability, have high-speed bandwidth, and let me tell you, it works. It really works. And there's something about seeing the person you're meeting with. Yeah, it's great to see their desktop. Great for them to see your presentation, you're meeting with a client or perhaps a, a future client and showing them the presentation. But to see their physical reaction, whether their arms are folded and they're frowning or whether they're smiling, whether they're nodding along with you. And for them to see you, if you're in sales, huge. If you're in training, huge. Even if you're just working with distributed colleagues all over the world, as we often do nowadays, this is huge. I want all you I can say, though, is that now you're going to have to actually put on a, a button-up shirt. 
Yeah, well, you know, I mean, you're I not put on pants still, but you're, you're uh, not you no to... bedhead anymore. You can't, you can't, you can't <laughs> no. do the meetings with the bedhead anymore. Uh, I just, I, I've been playing with it uh, since before they released it, and I was so impressed. And now it's out, and I want you to try it free for 30 days. It's, it, it's just fantastic. Visit the uh, website. It's go to meeting g o t o meeting dot com, and uh, oh, let me see if I can find the uh, the URL. It probably says on the page. Yeah, we use are, the we, offer code Mac Break. Mm -hmm. There you go. Go I think, I think I'm in three or four of these go-to meetings a, a week, and it's just I, love I don't it. know. I don't know how we I love get it. by without it. It's and great. when you use other clients' stuff, even the expensive stuff from other companies, you realize this really is the best. It's the best. Just click the orange "Try It Free" button and enter in M A C B R E A K Mac Break as the offer code, and uh, you're good to go. Go to meeting built in as part of the service, audio and now video with HD faces. It's just fantastic. By the way, yes, of course, it works great on Mac, um, on Lion, on Windows. iPhone, iPad. Uh, iPhone, works with Safari, works with Chrome. Uh, yeah, the iPad one's really cool. Yeah. It's really neat to do it on an iPhone or an iPad and see the... That's just awesome. Uh, all right, let's talk about the cloud. iOS 5 has rolled out, it rolled out a week ago. So people have had some time to have uh, play with it a little bit on their older iOS devices and now on the iPhone 4S. Um, it's, you know, it's, I, I love the notifications. Let's just talk about that first and we'll get to iCloud. Love the notifications. Yep. Nothing yeah. earth shattering. It's something Android's done for a while, but uh, love it. Um, I use them all the time. And you spend a lot more time now, though, you know, tweaking your settings because I don't want to be told every time somebody wants to be my friend on Facebook, but I do want to <laughs> get them, you know, it, you spend a lot of time messing with it. But once you got it set up, I think it's really great. It was like I finally broke down because I only had a, one or two machines online. So at home, I started you know getting all the machines you know in my right. iPhones and iPad and everything else, and it was turned into all Saturday afternoon of getting well, all that's the iCloud, absolutely you know, getting, absolutely. getting, getting absolutely. iCloud all, all sorted out and getting it all working. I, I mean, still I like, don't think I have it all sorted out. I, <laughs> did you read? Was did you go somewhere and read something to help you do this? No, I just kind of barreled through it. Figured if I lose some contacts, I'll if they're and they're important, I'll get them later. I mean, did I, I did you admit, lose any contacts? I didn't lose any. I, I, have, I always hit merge. I never hit replace or anything else. I always hit merge, merge, merge. So what I end up with is six versions of the same person, which I have to then go back and clean up rather than losing one. My wife did something else. I don't know what it was, but she, she lost like a bunch of contacts, you know, in the, in the process of syncing. So, so the, um, I mean, I think the, the big thing with, with, uh, with iCloud, at least, that I, that I was excited about is I opened up my iPad and I went to videos and suddenly all these, I, I bought all, you know, over the last, I don't know how many years, I bought lots of TV shows that I, you know, that you get up too much space, you put them on some hard drive, you forget about them or whatever. And suddenly they were all in one place. That's they, they cool. They all just showed up and he's like, would you like to download that one that you bought right. three years ago or four years ago? <laughs> so uh, is, to I, you know, it's pretty amazing. Now, how about data? Is, is my data just going to propagate? Like you, you were talking about pictures that, you're, that your <laughs> Isabella had so, taken yeah. of the ceiling. So is there, that, that is the one thing. about. So the biggest thing, and this is the thing that I asked people what they thought of the iCloud as well on my Twitter account. And the number one complaint about iCloud is not losing your data. It's not anything else. It's the fact that you can't individually delete images from your photo stream. Once you so, turn that feature on, you don't have to turn that feature on. You don't have to turn the photo stream. But, but of but course you, you want to because so it so copies turned, your pictures. So I turned it on on my, on my laptops and on my computer and my iPhone and iPad. And, and, the, um, and then my, I left my iPad over at my, at, at, in the living room and, my, and my, uh, uh, my daughter picked it up and I have 40 photos of the ceiling. And they're <laughs> and they're propagated within minutes to all of my machines. <laughs> wow! So, you know, and there's no way to delete them other than resetting the photo stream, you know, the whole photo stream, you know. And so you just you know they're okay. just and if it's fine, it's the last thousand photos. It'll slowly propagate its way out. But it's just it's a uh, that has been the number one complaint that I saw on my you know when I was asking people on my Twitter stream or my Twitter feed, uh, asking them what they you know. So there's what was some going granularity on, on the iPhone itself. You can. Have iCloud copy mail, contacts, calendars. Notice I use Google, so I turn that off. And I'm not sure that's the right thing to do. But I just didn't want to lose everything. I did turn on reminders. I did turn on bookmarks and notes. And here's the photo stream setting. You could turn and it might be easier for me because I don't use Google for my contacts. So I don't... So I don't, uh, maybe yes, maybe no. I don't know. I mean, uh, right. uh, I, I, I just turned documents on. and data. <laughs> um, and, and then find my iPhone. All, all of those are nice features. But yeah, I didn't, I didn't turn everything on. 
Um, <laughs> did you see that? Did you see that story about the find my friend? Find yeah, we'll talk friend. about yeah. that in a second. There is that is one potential <laughs> flaw. You know, you don't you don't need that. It's like even just with the photo sharing feature, so many teenagers at so many parties are going to be so busted exactly. when they get home. Exactly. Yeah. And the, the Apple TV screensaver in the living room. Oh my god! <laughs> so all kinds of like body shots and. <laughs> But See, I don't think I'm. I don't think I'm going to turn it on just for that. I mean, when I well, not for that, but when I go. Um, well, we know you're a party store. animal, absolutely. <laughs> no, when I go to the store, though, I, I want to make sure that something's the right thing. So I take a picture of it and I, you know, send it back to my girlfriend and say, "Is this what we're looking for?" That's very I don't useful. I want that on my Apple TV. That's boring. Yeah. I mean, that's and and also since I've started using Instagram quite a bit over the past year. Right. I'll take like five pictures of something and make sure that it looks exactly the way I want to. And I'll usually go back and delete the other four. So I'm going to have five pictures of that plant on my, on my TV for, well, well for the, the next that's, thousand that's, pictures. Eh. That's why an app like Camera Plus becomes more useful because it has its own private photo role. Right. So you can use that for your snapshots. Then when there's something mm -hmm. that's important enough, you want to photo stream it, then you just ah, kick it into clever. the pictures role. Yeah. Clever. That does make it more valuable. Yeah. Well, but that also, I mean, that also sort of negates the uh, the ease of use for photo stream, right? Well, you, you can't. Well, yeah, it, 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 that's the problem. It's all or nothing. nothing. Yeah. Well, right. if you if you need the if you need the bone simple version, then you just do nothing. But if you do want to have some granularity, then at least there's a way around it. So pictures that you take in third party camera apps do not get stored in the same place. This is another thing. Well, Marco Arment was it depends complaining on whether about this it, with it, Instapaper. It, 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 right. Do you it depends on have, how the app was put together. Yeah. And some of, so some apps use cache to store stuff, which is what it's the paper used to do. But now on iOS 5, that is, can be wiped at it without notice. So they, Or you can store it in the app's documents, which is a store that is permanent but can get massive. And that's what Marco's concerned about because that gets backed up. Um, and so, so, so if you use most most third-party photo apps, I presume uh, save the app not to the to the gallery, the standard photos gallery, but to uh, their own documents folder, and then give you an option to export out. I, that's how Camera Plus works, Andy. Yeah, it has its own private photo role. A lot of other camera apps work that way. And so, stuff then you save from the private photo role can then be can then be exported to the regular photo role. I will say it's, it's, a, it's a very interesting feature when you're talking about the stuff that we're seeing in New York, you know, with the uh, Occupy Wall Street and everything else of, you know, in the past <laughs> when people try and take away people's cameras, it won't matter. <laughs> you know, oh, you take, and that you is take a, all those photos. Huge. Those, those photos are streaming out immediately. Uh, you know, within minute, you know, seconds That's after a you very take the good photos. Point. From a uh, you know, from a press perspective, I think it's a really interesting opportunity. So, so uh, turn that on if you're going to be out there. If you're going to be out there. You turn that on and make <laughs> sure that it's uploading. Yeah, it's interesting. As soon as I saved a photo, it took it out of the film strip, out of the light box, um, uh, because it's now part of, I guess, the the standard photos. Well, we'll learn the camera roll. That's and I think those are things that. What's Apple the difference between a photo to? stream and a camera roll? Um, the camera roll is what your camera actually took, and the photo stream is what's in. So the, the camera being, roll. This is what's other the photo stream is connected to everything. So if you have your, if you take pictures with your iPad or you put things uh, into iPhoto or whatever into your photo stream, you know those so things. So the are camera all roll is a there. subset of photo stream. Photo stream is everything. It's it's all the different devices. You know, it's, it's it. anything on that's so the, yeah, the if, camera roll if, is what that camera took. The the photo stream is the collective. You know, it includes uh, what's on the camera roll. It looks like exactly. It's, it's, it's everything you took, whether you have photo stream turned on or on, or off. Right, got it. And with any with any device that's connected to that to your user. So if you're taking pictures with your iPad, it'll show up on your iPhone in the photo stream, but it won't See, show up on the camera roll. I don't use iCal. I use BusyCal. Fortunately, BusyCal put a big, long uh, document on what, how to get rid, how to upgrade to iCloud, uh, and but, it's and this. I mean, you have to do this. This is crazy. Well, and I think that this is actually one of the things that the the lock that Apple is is really getting on on folks is that uh, is that if you're not if you don't stay inside the Apple, um, you know. But I like tools, BusyCal so much better. I'm just saying, if you don't, you, there's a price. Fortunately, they they upgrade that, that the big page is the price. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, maybe. Um, I see. I boy, I resist that. And uh, you're right. You're everything's better if you just give up and give in. I've I, I've, <laughs> I've kind of just given in because yeah. I just like because I always know that every time there's an upgrade, it's going to be hard for me to move from one to the other. It's, you know, and I'm just like, uh, I'm let go and let Steve. This isn't well. Just that <laughs> these aren't things that are important enough in my life for me to um, customize. I think that's the issue. Yeah, and I really like Google Calendar. That's why I use BusyCal because it syncs with that. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Oh boy! I feel bad for you now. I don't even. You, 
I'm you don't sorry. even know me, and I feel bad for you. Well, you no, I, 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 <laughs> I don't I know, know you, and I, I mean, and I hate you're you. Completely crestfallen. I'm now. I'm so it's sad. Just, oh. <laughs> but, but if you look at things like this, like adding adding um, scheduling and everything else, is Siri going to work? For instance, with BusyCal, you know, if you're if you want to be adding uh, schedules into your well, that's your why. Calendar. And you saw when I first opened up my computer, I got a mobile me that old mobile me sync. You want to sync it because you have to do that so that Siri. Because yeah. you're right, I'm making appointments. They're showing up here, but they're not showing up there. And this is right. you're right. So maybe I should just give up. And stop using these third-party apps and just live <laughs> with Apple in the Apple world. I'm just saying. Come to the walled garden. They Come have fruit and yes, vegetables sorry. and all kinds of things. Uh, is Okay, well, let me ask the question. Is iCal uh, the, uh, the best calendar? No. Uh, no. It's just integrated with Is address else. book the best? I do like the new Western look. <laughs> Leather, cool leather stitching, yeah. <laughs> I, I will say I hate mail. I hate the new mail. You do? <laughs> Hate it. But you try and use something mail? else. Uh, I, I, I put on someone, someone, what was the one that's like a bird? I can't think of the name of it. Sparrow. I love Sparrow. Sparrow. Oh, I hated Sparrow. But too. you can't, it was, right. just, it was just the conversion that drove me crazy. Right. And so, so the, um, but, so I, I hate mail, but I don't want to deal with the trying to get to something else. I think that's the issue. And so, um, but, it, but I, yeah, it is one of those things like the new the layout that they have is just impossible for me to figure out what. Who emailed me when? I don't it's, like threaded I, comments. You know, I don't like threaded Walled uh, gardens, yeah. this, it's feeling like Facebook to me, where not only is it a walled garden, but there's all sorts of stuff happening that I don't understand. And, yeah. it's, and it's happening to me, and my photos are showing up in places, and things are sinking, and I don't understand it, and I don't mm. understand it. And I have to think that that is not the experience Apple wants people to have. And isn't iCloud giving you that kind of that experience? Is this, an, is this, is this inevitable? I think we're more uh, complex think, about the way we use it. I think that for the average person who's just turning it on and having it work, it just works. It just kind yeah, of. Yeah, I was, I was about to say. I think I think that there are two different iCloud experiences. The people who have been migrating from Mobile Me for, as users like of that, those services for the past three or four years, and the people who are just unboxing their first iPhone who have never used cloud services before, uh, and they people who think that it's quite wonderful that all the pictures they're taking on vacation are just landing on their laptops back home. Uh, without our IMAX back home, without having to do anything about it, uh, but yeah, I mean, for people in the first group, it really is uh, not a. It, the first couple of days was kind of a nightmare as various services were being split between Mobile Me and iCloud, and you're wondering, well, why? So why are you asking me to switch from Mobile Me Find My iPhone to <laughs> iCloud Find My <laughs> iPhone? If both thing. things find my iPhone. Right. Uh, and so I think we're all getting a taste of what it's like really to have an Android phone where it takes a couple of weeks before you get everything dialed in the way that you like it. And then it's smooth sailing after that, but it's, the, it's a couple of weeks where you're like, what happens if I click this OK box? Does awful things happen that I can't really understand right now? I think, though, this does happen to normal people uh, because I get calls on the radio show. For instance, I have two Apple accounts I'm using on my phone. I have mm -hmm. a cloud account. That's my me account. And then I also have the account that I use to buy stuff at the iTunes store. They're not the same account. And initially, it, I, the iPhone and the iPad were just choking on this. And I had to go back. And finally, I found it. If I did it in this order, change settings this way, you can't have the both of them. Well, I think that that's kind of the power user thing. You know, like for me, I've I don't had think the same. so. I think that that's well, unfortunately that's the kind of thing people accidentally do. Yeah. Right. That you. It's mm. so easy to the first time you set up an account with iTunes to not really understand all those years ago. What happens if you decided to create a brand new iTunes account? Uh, and now, it's years later, this really is biting a lot of people on the butt. Now, fortunately, I'm really, really, I, I've always had separate accounts for a lot of different things, but all my personal stuff has always been tied to the same, uh, to the, uh, to the same mobile me account. But yeah, there's just no acceptable uh, solution to the problem of having multiple accounts. I think that merging all these different uh, attempts that Apple made over the years to have any kind of a network service uh, a subscription model, I think that that's really something that Apple needed to fix, and they didn't. But And, yeah, now we're stuck with it. And, by the way, it's a little strange that the uh, Find My iPhone now finds my desktop computers as well. Yeah. <laughs> I guess if it's stolen, that's a good thing. Yeah. yeah. And for a laptop, yeah. that's a good thing. But uh, I know exactly where my desktop computer is. It's in my house. <laughs> you know that do you for me for me <laughs> is it for for me there have been many times when i when i have actually been happy to know where my, you know wished i knew where my laptop was right. like do i know is it in the <laughs> office or is it in my house right. you know, like which way do i have yeah. to go to find it right. and now i do and i've done that with my iphone i'm like should i keep on looking at it, looking for it here in the house or do i need to go somewhere else to find it and knowing roughly where it is has been useful it's kind of interesting yeah if if you you know for a laptop it makes a lot of sense yeah um 
which I think is where most, I don't know what the cross section is, but it seems like people who are buying Apple devices now, I mean, I think these laptops, these little ones and, you know, the Airs and everything else, I think are, the portable Mac is a, a lot more popular. I want to answer questions because we have so many of them coming through and, uh, and, and we will do that. Uh, but I also don't want this show to be more than five hours long because that's, I have a pledge, <laughs> a pledge. Um, iOS 5 for the I, Apple TV? Yes. What's happening here? It's getting the iOS 5 treatment, according to the cult of Mac. They've added... Hockey. Huh? Hockey. hockey. <laughs> it's all about hockey. And it's hockey I'm and Wall Street Journal. Me, so, by hockey. the way, the Wall Street Journal, uh, if, if anyone here from, is watching from the Wall Street Journal, the, the video quality and the content quality is so low it's that you oh, really, dude. really need to... <laughs> uh, I'm not going to say they, Fire, who is working on it, but I'm saying... Do they got, something. Murdoch's got money. Something, because it is... $100 million. I'll, I'll, I'll I mean, fix it all up for you. From a quality <laughs> perspective, how can they get the daily so right when it comes to, like, oh, good content? Oh, the daily's got 50,000 subscribers, though. But That's the, the problem. But the thing is, is the Wall Street Journal... The, 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 but the Wall Street Journal it's content... the Wall Street Journal. The Wall Street Journal content... You, you, you should just take that. I mean, I know that Apple mm. gave you that space, but you should take that. You should turn that off until you can figure out how to do it right. Because I, I watched it for, like, 15 minutes, and it was so painful. I was like, I'm... You know, because I, I was just curious. Like, what are they going to do? I was excited that they might do something useful to watch and the people who are on there were so bad and the, the quality of the content was so bad the framing was off the quality was off you're just like they really put this on apple tv i mean that's the whole thing if apple tv is going to be specific if they're going to be like specific like we're only going to give these people access to the apple tv they should they should make sure that there's some kind of guarantee of quality because it's just horse there's also poo -poo. it's it's a live channel. I mean, which was the exciting thing about that i mean i'm i'm right. excited about hockey because i'm excited about hockey what was cool is the was hockey live actually uh, yeah. Wow. Although I, That's I cool. see the thing is, yeah. Anyway. NFL. Yes. We want NFL, not NFL. NHL. Yeah. NFL. I want to watch the Come Steelers. on, dude. Steelers. Oh, my Apple Please. TV. Like, like you can't no, you throw a rock and you'll hit a TV playing the NFL. Come on, hockey. <laughs> um, the thing is, I watched. I tried to watch a little bit of the Wall Street Journal content, um, and there are two things. Well, there are two things wrong with it. First of all, it's not live for the time that it's live. So you turn it on, and it says, "Hey, come back in three hours," because then we've got something uh, live on it. It puts up the schedule when it's not bad. on. And the other problem, as Alex points out, is the content. I was watching, I, I happened to catch one of the few minutes a day that the live content is actually live. Um, and there was, and I don't want to insult this one person in particular, I don't know her name. There was like this probably somewhere between late 60s to mid 70s year old woman talking about how realistic the show Two Broke Girls was. <laughs> Okay, already we're done, I think, because I don't turn to the Wall Street Journal for m media reviews. And then if I am going to turn to the Wall Street Journal for media reviews, I'm going to have a hard time believing that, oh, uh, uh, you know, somebody who's probably in her 70s who's writing for the Wall Street Journals would know how, or Wall Street Journal would know how realistic Two Broke Girls is. So uh, and in that respect, it was really disappointing. Plus, I could hear somebody's high heels clopping as they were walking. <laughs> no way We have that the problem, camera. too, but uh, we, well, I can help them with that. <laughs> <laughs> so, I mean, what was exciting was to see them do sort of what, I, as I understand, and I don't have a Roku box, but was to see them do what Roku has done, where you've got channels, right? Because right. all they've had so far is like YouTube, Vimeo, uh, the NBA, uh, MLB, um, and then Netflix and the stuff that you can buy or rent from Apple. And, and podcasts. Yeah, right. And podcasts and, you know, both audio and video. And they've got the radio things as well. But as far as like actual content that's being... It, it was the first thing that they did that actually looked like it might even be sort of thinking about, hey, what is this whole cable thing about and how can we right. sort of tromp in you on can't that? Do, you can't be a cord cutter if you can't get live. It's, or you right. can, and but it's just that's where it really starts to hurt people. That's the pain point. So. Yeah. Well, and I think I think that now that they're starting to do that, I mean, but I think like Twit.tv, uh, Revision Three, these are these are things that we are be. streaming live on Roku. No, what uh, I'm saying on we Apple. have some problems with it. I mean, it's look, this is all in, right. in nascent, and we have uh, some issues with the HLS server that we uh, are working on. So I think that in some degree, Apple might be saying, "Well, let's wait till this matures a little bit, and uh, we'll, we'll we'll do more." I I yeah. think having a channel store is a good idea. Yeah, um, is and it can be like an app store. I think just a full app store. <laughs> I'd love to see the app store. I mean, it, it, that it, solves it, all of it, right? Yeah, you just, just buy the app. Yeah. No, I do like the um, I do like the um, screen mirroring over AirPlay. Yeah. With uh, with um, can, and you mirrors the entire iPad, right? Everything, right? Yeah. So yeah, no matter what does. what's going on, you see your entire iPad. You don't have to. Used to be able to you hook. You'd have to hook up the HDMI cable. Now you can see the well, whole and, thing. And not only is it is that useful. I mean, it's really useful for business and for education because it's it means that anybody can just us. pop that up and and just you know yeah sync them quickly. Yeah. 
Um, see and then there's also content that you can't get on Apple TV that, I mean, you like I've got, I've got the Al Jazeera English app because sometimes right. I want to see news. And so right. I turn on one of the five news channels on my cable, you know, and it's, you know, locked down Pittsburgh or it's you know, something that has nothing to do with news. It's some special that they, you know, canned like two years ago that they're replaying because it's the middle of the night. And still, I really want news, and so having having access to that app I and just agree. being able to shoot it to my television is actually pretty I neat. Yeah. Al Jazeera is definitely the best uh, world news out there that isn't on cable. TV well, it's in the interesting because no U.S. cable company, uh, cable channel, will ever be able to do what Al Jazeera is doing, and uh, so it's going to end so, up being the international yeah. news channels that have a leg up on uh, CNN and Fox and and all the rest. Yeah, uh, and, and there's I mean, there's also like Crackle, which is that Sony Sony's app. Sony's Crackle. Sony. <laughs> yeah, Sony's yeah. Crackle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Which, I mean, has a couple of really neat shows on it. And, you know, the easiest yeah. way to get it to my Apple TV is just to now hit the Crackle thing and, and go. Yep. But, so, that's fine. Sunday fun. was declared Steve Jobs Day in California. And uh, it was the same day that there was a super secret event at Stanford University. Very difficult to get into unless you were a major technology executive. Uh, the Clinton family, Nancy Pelosi was there. Uh, Steve Jobs' widow, uh, Laureen, and his sister, Mona, three of his kids spoke, uh, as did Larry Ellison and uh, Johnny Ive. Um, YouTube, YouTube's uh, Bono performed. Joan Baez sang. She had dated Steve early in his life. Uh, Yo-Yo Ma, the cellist, performed. Bono read his lyrics from an iPad. Uh, there will be a larger company memorial tomorrow don't know if it is open to the public but i suspect not i think no, it's I for think apple so. employees only so far no public memorial although there have been public memorials including the amazing post-it notes uh memorial at the apple store it's in germany yeah uh munich there's actually a time-lapse video of them making it it's all with a uh, blue green and uh, yellow post-it notes and it's that beautiful picture of uh, Steve Jobs, which, by the way, taken in 2006, was taken on film, I just learned. Uh, let's yeah. see. Yeah. Here's one uh, Steve Jobs portrait made from MacBook parts. That one's kind of creepy yeah. looking. It's a I mean, weird. it's respectful, it's a which is nice, but... It's yeah, exactly. Yeah. That's from Terminator. Day. Mint, mint G Digital. Gia Day put it together a really nice, uh, like, uh, flash. <laughs> Ironically, it requires the use of flash. Uh, memorial that's sort of a mosaic of all the online tributes that have been posted and all the all the significant YouTube videos and all the significant uh, pictures that have been posted over the past few weeks and the most the more the, the more you keep it active the more of these things sort of fade in and the more defined uh, the portrait gets uh, it's really and it's really pretty cool especially as you keep mousing over and clicking on these videos and reading these things this guy's doing it with salt believe it or not uh, can, can I go ahead and apologize now for saying that was creepy looking? It was very respectful. I'm sorry. It was respectful, but it was, I know what you're saying. It's Borgy. It, it was machine yeah. parts. So it just made well. Steve look a little bit like a, a member of the Borg. Uh, I, I don't know. In some ways, all of this is a little odd. I think it comes from people who are really uh, very talented and creative and their deep respect and love for Apple. Yeah. Uh, you know, most most of these creatives use Macintosh products and have... Since nine, you know, since 1980s, and that's probably where a lot of that comes from. This is pretty amazing what this guy does with salt. Yeah, it is. Wow. Don't ever say. Don't ever say that that the artist is made by the tool. After you see this, right? Yeah, no kidding. <laughs> the guy used a piece of paper and some salt. <laughs> Did a better portrait than I can do with Photoshop. That's pretty. Yeah, impressive. but that's imported like gourmet salt. If oh, I had right, right, exactly. And that was a very special. Brown by Alton Brown. All right, we have uh, a lot of questions uh, have come in or comments. Uh, through your tool, the Pixel yeah. Core tool, pixelcore dot uh, it's, force it's dot dot com slash pixel pixel core. Core. Yep. Uh, Last chance to vote. We'll take we the highest over, voting uh, uh, questions. We had over 200, I think. Wow, people, that's great. Uh, sign in, and uh, we've had over 100 questions. And we will get to some of those and also our picks, which we will. I'm going to ask everybody to keep kind of short mm -hmm. uh, because that's usually where we end up bl uh, blowing out the show <laughs> is the picks because we love our picks. I'll do mine in less than a minute. Okay. Uh, but first, let me give you a little plug for audible.com. If you're not already listening to audiobooks, I got to tell you, Audible is fantastic. 
Uh, I am an Audible subscriber. Have been since 2000. I have over 500 books in my library, all of which I can listen to on my iPhone or my Android phone or my iPad just by launching the Audible app. They're all there, which is really cool. Of course, you can download them and listen to them in, in, you know, in the iPod. They work on all iPods and almost all music players, including, yes, the Zune. Uh, Randall Strauss, who writes uh, great tech columns in the uh, San, Diego, uh, sorry, San Jose Mercury News, has written a book on Thomas Edison, which might be kind of interesting. Uh, the Wizard of Menlo Park, How Thomas Edison Invented the Modern World, especially had, in light of all the comparisons of Edison to Steve Jobs. Yeah. I want you to go to audible.com slash MacBreak. The reason we recommend books is because your first one's free. You sign up for the uh, gold account. That's a book a month. Your first month's free. Your first book is free. Uh, I encourage you to try it. I do want you get free excerpts, by the way, for members, so you can always listen to any book, play the sample. I'm I'm gonna I love I loved Middlesex Jeffrey Eugenides' uh, previous novel. His new novel is out, The Marriage Plot. But but let me ask Andy because Andy always has great recommendations. Oh look, a free chapter from Neil Stevenson's Red Rimdi. If you want to see what that sounds like, what are you listening to, Andy? Uh, my current book is by Temple Grandin and Catherine oh, yeah. Johnson. Yeah, it's another. I recommended one Temple Grandin book about uh, it was sort of a memoir about a few, couple years ago. This one is specifically about what she has her doctorate in, which is about an animal behavior. Uh, and it really, it's so interesting to see. To, he, she explains all these cases in which uh, she's designing systems that animals are supposed to be moving through. Uh, and her thing is to figure out how the animal is going to see this environment and how to get them to simply want to walk through it. Uh, and she, all these cases are just you, things you would never consider. And one of the basic things she explains is that animals obviously see the world differently, but they're really focused on details. Uh, things that we, we're, we, we have a higher functioning brain. We're designed to sort of edit out things that we don't regard as important or that isn't uh, we, we've seen it a million times, so we sort of don't even see it. Uh, and yet, when an animal goes to the same sort of line, you have a, you'll have a, a, a stockade or, or that's designed so that the animals will go through it freely and willingly. And then you wonder, well, why are they suddenly balking at this point? And then the, the reason why it turns out is because the ranch hands who are who are there to like get the cattle through it's a hot day so they're taking off their 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 shirts and putting it on like this this wire that's somewhere and it's just the simple fact that when they turn around this corner in the corner of their eye they see this little thing that's sort of moving and that just like they sort of like that's weird and they have to it gets it gets their entire attention and the idea of having to go through the shoot is not on their minds at all they're just like sort of hypnotized by why is this thing here and why is it moving like that uh, and so it's a great book because it does really uh, it's 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 all it's all about animals. It doesn't try to take a larger well, a larger point of view of oh well cer certainly we can learn a lot about how we interact with each other based on how animals see the world. It really is just about this uh, this branch of science. But it really does sort of demonstrate that if you're trying to get animals through uh, through this through through this maze. Uh, one way is to keep prodding them with uh, with electrical stuff and just keep swatting them on the behind and sort of shoving them through. Another one, another way is just to figure out why are they stopping at this point? What is different about this scenario than other scenarios in which you have full control of the animal? And if you can figure that out, it turns out that you can get things through so much more efficiently and get them to do what you want them to do. So it's the, the I've never had a never had to uh, get a, a herd of cattle from uh, from Wyoming to wherever you take. A cattle to, uh, but uh, it really does point <laughs> out that Wyoming. Yeah, just you know, oh, cheese sure, just down the road. I think cheese. You know, <laughs> you know <laughs> to, Mrs. To, yeah, to, to, to the play date that she farms down. I just think it's interesting because um, you know she's she's a very high functioning autistic person who has really uh, uh, achieved huge things. And if you saw the sh the movie, the movie about her and, mm -hmm. and so forth, you understand that. Uh, but she, what she, the insight she had was that the thing, the issues that she has with autism are very similar to the behavioral issues that uh, animals run into. And so she can use her own uh, autism to understand animals better. I thought that was fascinating. Yeah. Just really yeah. interesting. Uh, animals in Translation, it's called Using the Mysteries of Autism to Decode Animal Behavior by Temple Grandin. You see, this is the thing. Audible lets you learn all the time while you're in the car. I was just used, listening to Audible at the gym when you're cleaning the house. I have it playing through my Sonos system. 
throughout the house as I'm cleaning the house. I love it. It's 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 when I'm cleaning the house and doing yard work. That's yeah. my that's my big yeah. apple time. Yeah, my family hates it, but I don't care. <laughs> <laughs> if we're not. We, you're listening to a book. We don't even know what book you're. I don't care. I'm listening to this book. audiblecom slash MacBreak. Give it a try. Absolutely free. Your first book's free. You're gonna love it. Uh, let us move on to uh, our little tool here, and then we'll get our picks of the week. I want to do this as quickly as we can. We've got about we got two big questions. Fifteen minutes total for all of it. So, question: This is the highest voted question, and I think a really good one. This one's ba battery draining quicker on iOS five is oh, our number one question. This is Mike Elgin reported that. Uh, of course, it's hard to tell in the Todd. first day or two. This is from Todd Stanfield. He says, "Seems to me it's been just. It, it might be just the Find My Friends app in the GPS, which could be the case. That would certainly do it. I have uh, not had that that experience so far. It seems like it drains faster to me. Does it? Do you yeah. have a Find My Friends on? Uh, yes, I do. Because I, I think that constantly hitting that GPS is going to make a difference in the the how long you're. Uh, battery life. Well, I haven't tried it without Find My Friends, but my pick will show you what I do. <laughs> right. <laughs> uh, Andy Yanaka, what's your experience been? Has Is, is battery life uh, an issue on the new uh, iOS? Yeah, uh, that, that's true. I have been noticing a certain... Uh, it, it, I'm getting... I have fewer uh, battery... less battery at the end of the day. Yep. Uh, same uh, same situation as, uh, as before. Uh, and I do think that it is related to iCloud services because experimentally yesterday I just turned off all iCloud services uh, and tried to stick with what I was doing with it before and battery life was actually better than what it was before. So I think this is another case where you're just going to have to start turning off features that you don't need or don't want and see if the battery life goes back up to where you want it. If you're in a situation where you can dock your iPhone when you get to the office or when you drive around the car, all this sort of stuff becomes moot because it's not, it's not a severe battery problem, but it'll definitely, it's definitely something to keep in mind when you're on a travel day. You know, one of those days where you leave the house at seven in the morning, you're not going to be back at a power outlet until you check into your hotel that night. And so that's another thing to think about that, well, maybe for the course of this day, I'll turn off these three features to make sure that I'll still have 20% battery by the time I get to my hotel. Well, and I always, if I'm, if I'm having a long day, a long shoot day, typically, I always have batteries, uh, like mm -hmm. a battery pack. You yeah. know, um, I have, whether Leo's got the Mophie, I have a Miley, um, but, but I, you know, I always have a battery pack with me if I'm going to do too bad we have to do that because it is a beautiful phone by itself, but you just, uh, no smartphone will get you through the day if you use it heavily, mm -hmm. period. Right. Uh, but I, iPhone used to be the best of the bunch. I, I think it's now probably a little more comparable. Because it's doing a lot more stuff. Android phones, yeah. 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 Uh, second question. Um, oh, go ahead, Ken. I'm sorry, really quickly. If you're following Don McAllister online, he had uh, severe problems with his battery when he did the iOS 5, and he reset something. And I was just looking at my Twitter feed, and unfortunately uh, I can't find it because it was a few like days a hard ago. Reset. But and that fixed it? He said he said it wasn't sure uh, if that was what, much what it was. There's some kind of hard reset that he did mm -hmm. um, that, that seemed to have uh, fixed it. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Second big question. Yes. Uh, iOS uh, 5, Wi-Fi syncing. Is, what are the ins and outs of Wi-Fi syncing? How do you know when it's working? When does it back up and sync? Uh, do we need to have iTunes running? This is from Chris Shepard. Do we know any of those things? Well, I'm glad, glad he asked a quick question that we can easily answer <laughs> yeah, in exactly, just a few exactly. seconds. Well, this is, these are the two that were the most, the most, most... No, and, the, and this is it. With, the, with all of these new features, it's, it, it, Apple doesn't tell you a whole lot. They, it, they just they, say, they, turn they, it on, and it'll it. just do it. Right. It in fact, that's what Steve about. said. It just works. Except that people like us want to know, well, what the hell is it doing? Right. How do well, it wi -Fi work? Syncing, wi Fi syncing, we know for sure. Work. I mean, you obviously have to have Wi Fi on it. It also has to be plugged into power. So it's not like the second you right. walk into your house, it doesn't start doing stuff back and forth. It actually has to be plugged it's in. It's kind of for the thing where you're so, charging it overnight, you turn it on. Right. You, right. Let your, you, you have to leave your computer on. You have to leave, uh, I think you have to leave iTunes running. Does anyone turn their computer off? Yeah. I guess people, I've heard of people. <laughs> You I've heard of people doing this. I like restart right. it every once in a while to like clear, you know, clear out the cobwebs. You know, like oh, I probably should yeah. restart this computer. I've used a Wi-Fi syncing on Android for a long time, and the problem with it is it, it just tends to be slow. Yeah. So it's good for kind of topping off. Right. But you're still going to want to sync if you're moving a lot of uh, data. But the really the way to think of it is exactly what Ken was saying, which is that you do it when you go to, you know, you do it you overnight. Go to bed. Yeah. Sync, if, if you did that every night, you'd be better than 99 percent of the users <laughs> as far as backups go. <laughs> right. You know, right. making sure that everything's taken care of. Right. All right, let us get to our iOS uh, tip of the week. And actually, I don't know if, Andy, if you want to use this, but a listener gave us a great iOS tip. Do you have that uh, to hand? Or do you want I, to do something else? I have I actually prepared the macOS tip. He has the macOS tip. Oh, I'm you're the, the iOS, iOS tip. tip. Let's just go yeah. ahead and use the, the one that was sent in. Uh, this, I thought this was really great. I'm sorry, I thought he said Andy did this. So Steve uh, <laughs> Fumarolo, or Fumarolo, Fumarolo, yeah. He says, I know uh, oh, Alex does the iOS tip on MacBook Weekly. I came across this by uh, accident, but I thought it was a good tip, and I agree. 
Yeah, I didn't know this. In iOS 5, iPhone's accessibility options have a custom vibrate pattern feature. So then you can edit a contact and give each contact a custom vibrate. Da, 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 da. Bum, bum. Can you do like Morse code? You can, you can, it, there are a few of them built in, or you can record your own pattern. How do you record your own pattern? I you haven't played pattern. with this, but I think this is very interesting. Uh -huh. So go, go into accessibility in iOS and uh, take a look at it. I guess that's in the general uh, settings. Let me see where it is. I can't find it. Yeah, I'm, it's in general. It's the bottom yeah, of general. Uh, right under, I've got your camera there. All right. Oh, good. Thank you. Then we can do this. Okay. Uh, and then custom vibrations, turn those on. Assign a unique vibration. Then you go to contacts and you can assign a, new, a unique vibration to uh, So once you do that, then you. you go back to sound. Yep. First you do that, then you go back to sound. And, and I'm going to give you another, uh, another great tip that uh, I discovered on my own, but others have told me about. Finally, emojis are built in. You, if, you, if you use international keyboards, go to international keyboards. One of the international keyboards, you've got to scroll down, is emoji. Those emojis are those fun little. I'll t I'll start typing something and you'll and you'll see what I mean here. They're the fun little um, things. I so you change your keyboard and then you have all these little fun icons that only people with iPhones can see. Everybody else will think you're cracked. <laughs> uh, and there they are. You see that? Okay. So I can now put these in and so forth. So there's two things you can do. Are you making a custom oh, vibration? Oh my goodness! Is it? Oh. My goodness! Okay, this is so cool. let's try this. It so. is, it is like this is a oh my, I'm sorry, oh. <laughs> this is better than Siri. You, All right, so, so, so anyway, so <laughs> so here, so so you go into you go after you set it up, you turn it on and yes, I turn it on and you go to edit, then you go back to sounds. Yeah. Oh, you have to go so to now sounds. You go back to sounds. Oh, and okay. Then, so go into sounds okay. and and go and you'll see vibration patterns at the bottom. Mm, I'm glad you did the research here. Okay, sounds. And at the and bottom, then, vibration patterns. Okay, now go into There's create heartbeat. new custom. Boom, no, no, boom. Go into create There's new custom. rapid. Go into create There's new S -O -S. custom. There's Forget those. <laughs> now create new vibration. All right, yeah, now you just start tapping. Just start tapping. Da, 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 da. Okay. Da, da. But, but you okay, you can do that. It works! <laughs> you, could, like, you could like be doing like little Morse codes with a person. Or, you can or do Morse code. Kinds of crazy. You could, if you know Morse code, which I plan to soon... You could have everybody's name in Morse code. You'd never, you know, when they're talking. That is very, that is very neat. That's that's cool. So I'm gonna call this shave and a haircut. <laughs> very cool. All right. So a couple of iOS tips. Everybody's here. get. All my friends are getting their own vibrate now. Everybody gets your own vibration. Uh, Andy, your Mac tip. This is a quick one. Uh, one thing that's confusing about mission control in spaces is what do you do if you want to designate, if you want to basically put all of your windows for one specific app in their own space? Uh, because they made a change to how you move a window, uh, how, how you move application windows into into new spaces. In uh, in Lion now, the actual app, if you go into mission control, uh, the actual application icon on that uh, on that uh, screen is actually the handle for that represents all the windows associated with this thing. So then, if you just grab that icon and drag it into a new space or an existing space, all of a sudden, all those windows now are moved into that space. So if you want to basically collect all of your Safari windows and make sure that this space is Safari land or this space is mail land, uh, then that's exactly how to do it. Quick. <laughs> You're playing with a vibration. Can you hear it? <laughs> this, is, this is shaving a haircut. Here's Symphony. <laughs> Isn't that funny? It's... It's so funny. All right. Thank you, Andy. I don't know what you said. I was too busy playing with this. <laughs> but I'm sure it was an excellent tip and I'll go back and listen to the show and and find out. <laughs> I'm sorry. That's fine. Maybe, maybe someday I'll be in the studio and I'll be part of the hijinks. I guess until then I'll just be on the outside looking in. That is a pretty cool. And I have to say, <laughs> that that's, is a, awesome. that's a pretty cool. This is, this is the craziest stuff. That, I'm so glad. I'm so glad this was sent in by Steve because this was a. Uh, yeah, thank you, Steve. That's a good one. This is that's such a, a good one. Steve and it's something that, that if, if he hadn't sent that to us, we never would have found it. Never would have found it. Let us get our picks of the week. And I don't know if, uh, Ken, if you prepared one, but I'd love to have it if you have it. I did. Animog. Animog. Animog, uh, sorry. What is yes. that? It's uh, a new app for the iPad uh, from uh, the Moog people. Oh, the it's, and it's, it's, I mean, honestly, what I hear is that it's going to be great for musicians. For me, it's just a gargantuan waste of time, but it's a lot of fun. I sat <laughs> for like 30 minutes and 
basically made something that sounded like the soundtrack to uh, Blade Runner Ooh. for a very long time. But um, 99 cents right now, at the end of 30 days, it's going up to $30. And that's how you know it's going to be big for musicians. So now's your chance. 99 cents. And is, it it goes the, up. I the, uh, is it the iOS store or the App Store? I mean, is it for um, phone? I thought or that was the App Store. iOS. No, it's for the iPad. It's just for the, the iPad. iPad. Got it. Mm -hmm. Yes. No, so there's, yes, you know, we have the, the Apple App Store. We have the, the Apple's confused us, of course, because there's an App Store for OS X, there's an App right. Store for iOS. So you see, I call that one the Mac App Store because I think that's what they uh, do, which is really goofy. Eventually, we'll have to come up with different names, so they'll put them all in one place. So, but either way, it's a lot of fun. Um, Anamo I go in, I start. A N A M O O G. No, A N I M O O G. Like animated MOOC. I got it. Exactly. Um, and it's really, I mean, it's really, it's, it's gorgeous to play with. It's a lot of fun. It's geeky enough that you go in and you mess with settings and you have no idea what you're doing, but it creates a whole bunch of different, I mean, it's visually stunning. It's, it's fun to listen to. I will never make a song out of it, but I will have a lot of fun doing it. Um, yeah, so I, I would definitely recommend that one, especially right now, because, I mean, if you listen to this or if you watch this a month from now and you say, I'm going to try it, it's going to be 30, 30 bucks, bucks then. Yeah. So do it now, because 99 cents. How can you go wrong? Fart apps cost less or more than that. <laughs> than 99 cents, so do it. So, and this, and you, can you make a fart with this? No. Well. Oh, how disappointing. <laughs> I mean, sort of, you know, sort of like a, like a, a, a Nexus 6 kind of. <laughs> <laughs> the thing. Mr. Alex Lindsay, your pick of the week, sir. So my pick is, is mostly pointing at something that is, I think, an important uh, evolution for Apple. So my pick is the airport utility. If you haven't gotten the airport utility, mm. uh, it is pretty awesome. I've got three airports running in my on my grounds <laughs> between my the garage wow. and the front house wow. and the back house. And uh, and it's got like little, it doesn't see anything right now, but it's got like this little graphic. And so you this is also play iOS. with the routing. Yeah, um, download this now. And uh, and the thing that's interesting about this is this is one of the last um, you know vestiges. Uh, Blair actually what, um, sent me an email that pointed this out. This is like one of the last things that uh, that is a um, that was something you could only do on your computer. And la yesterday, as I said, I was. I spent most of yesterday in bed, and uh, my wife was freaking out that she couldn't get access to the internet. So I'm just reconfiguring our airport, laying in bed on my <laughs> I iPhone. Can't and, you know, I was just like, I was just like, I was just too sick to stand. Every time I sat up, I had to go to the bathroom. Oh, and so, boy. and so I, so I was sitting there laying on the like reconfiguring all the settings for my for my airports on my iPhone. You're just, you're just like Mozart composing the composing exactly, the, uh, exactly. the the, the, the funeral class. Exactly. So the thing is, is that but it, it, this it's is actually Alex's much nicer. requiem. This is actually much <laughs> nicer than uh, the i the the um, now, desktop version. I don't think it's quite. I have to point feature. out it only works with Apple's airports. For instance, it's not seeing which our, is all I use, so I don't really yeah, care. But so anyway, so the <laughs> once again, you got to give in. You got to give into the into the into the walled garden. We're so not using I've got three any airports that are Apple all connected. Wi-Fi access. Points, um, when you so uh, here, here's what it looks like when you when you do it's you've got a nice little graphic. So this they're they're an offline obviously. They're right? offline right now, but but the thing is you got this nice little graphic. You can route them. You can select them, change all their settings, do all their pieces. It was that's pretty cool. Quite a, quite that's a really neat. Thing. That's really neat. Airport yeah, it's free from Apple on the iOS yeah, store. And, but it, it, it's important to see that Apple really is pushing all of those things into that system where you're not going to need your computer to do right. anything. This is the computer. Yes. Andy Anako, your pick of the week, sir. A little bit from left field. Uh, a lot of people a lot of people remember uh, Mouse, that really cool Pulitzer Prize winning graphic novel about yes. the Holocaust. Uh, and recent, just this month, uh, Art Spiegelman came out with this book, Meta Mouse, Ooh. which is sort of like the this ultimate director's commentary on the entire series. So not only it's it's a beautiful book in and of itself that just page after page just ex interviews and background material and uh, uh, and stories about based lots of context of everything that went in, not oh, not only went to his wife Francois yeah, yeah not only the stuff that went into the story but also how the story was put together how it changed you know how he uh, uh, change his life, change his career, his attitudes towards stuff. But it also comes with, and now we can focus in on the swastika. <laughs> uh, it also are you supposed to put your uh, your picture there and uh, oh, Meta Mouse Ooh. exactly. 
It also includes this DVD that has the entire uh, graphic novel uh, oh, on uh, in, in uh, digital format, and it's also like completely hyperlinked, so that when you're getting to like an interview segment where the, there's there are scenes in which he's interviewing his father in the in the 70s and 80s, you can actually click and hear the audio of the actual interview wow. that he was recording, and click on other things, get maps about uh, more information about what you're looking at. It's uh, sort of like if you remember, there used to be a Voyager CD version of Mouse, and this was his. This this was Spiegelman's desire to, now that you, there's no way to play the original Voyager CD, let's do something even better than that right now. Uh, I saw this uh, at the at the con, had to order <laughs> had to order a copy by Amazon, it arrived recently. Unfortunately, for some reason, my DVD doesn't play at all. It's supposed to be Mac compatible as well as uh -huh. Windows compatible. But just, you know, the, the version that I saw that was working over the weekend uh, just made me instantly take up my iPhone and, and, and make the purchase, so... It's just really, really just a co the coolest fusion of like print and digital that I've ever seen. Yeah, I love, I love uh, Mouse. Yeah. Amazing. Thank you, Andy, for a great recommendation. Um, we were talking about poor battery life on iOS 5. I also have experienced it, but I don't want to deal with it. I don't want to turn stuff off. I want to turn everything on. So I've taken my nice, small, elegant iPhone 4S and made it into a truck. It's a behemoth. <laughs> This is the Mophie. Now, there, there is a Mophie Juice Pack Air, which is a 1,500 milliamp hour battery. This is the Juice Pack Plus, 20 bucks more, and it's a little bit thinner, thicker and heavier, but this is 2,000 milliamp hours. It's effectively more than doubling the capacity. Uh, so the way it works, uh, it's still, you no longer use a 30-pin connector. You use one of these ubiquitous micro USB connectors. Um, the USB connector charges both the iPhone and the Air simultaneously. Typically, it charges your iPhone first, and then it passes over to the Air to the to the battery. You know, I okay. I, I think it does both, but anyway, uh, it doesn't matter because you know you're going to do it overnight while mm -hmm. it's doing the Wi-Fi. Those four lights will show you. So it's just finishing up the charge on the Air, uh, and then there's a switch. They recommend that you let the phone die or get close to dead, and then turn the switch on which will then start running the uh, iPhone from the uh, juice See, And I like to do it the exact opposite. You know, it, the because main then, point is you get double the battery. Right, right? because like when I do it, I, I always put it on. Use I, the air, you let the air well, run out? No, so as soon as, the, as soon as the battery comes out, I can pop it off, continue to use my iPhone and plug ah. that in and, and charge it. Keep on charging That's a good idea. So that I have it again sometime That's a good soon. idea. You know, I just, so bought, yeah. I just so I bought two. So uh, two, two does work too. Two two Mophies. Two, yeah. two works. So that way, <laughs> just <laughs> plug one Mophie in, have that in the uh, hotel room because I know you need it really day to day. It's when I'm traveling. Yep. It's when I'm yep. uh, at CES or that kind of thing. Uh, Seventy nine ninety five list price for the Juice Pack Air. The Juice Pack Plus um, twenty dollars more for more battery. And as you can see, it comes in colors: black, mm -hmm. blue. I'm sorry, cyan, magenta, yellow, purple, and red. I got the cyan. I think a white iPhone with a cyan trim. It's pretty nice. It's kind of sexy. Dylan. It's kind of pretty. Anyway, that's uh, we've recommended these before. The Plus is uh, something a little bit new, and uh, I think it may be that for the 4S, this is what you need. You know what I just do on uh, Android phones? I just buy multiple batteries right? Uh, with a USB charger, but you can't do that on the iPhone. So there you go. Hey, I thank you all for being here. OS Ken, so nice to have you. In, uh, Thank you very come much. back again very soon. If everybody goes to macosken.com, they will find his great podcast there. And uh, you do that, uh, it's almost every day, or is it every day? It's Monday through Friday. It's yeah. about 15 minutes, uh, somewhere between, uh, anywhere between 10 and 20 minutes a day of, you know, as much Apple news as I can cram in right with, then. With attitude. Yeah. That's what I hear. It's a great way to get your daily That's Mac news. Thanks. Yeah, macosken.com. Thanks for being here. Alex Lindsay, uh, Thursday, pixelcore.com slash live. Yes. You'll be uh, doing a reprise. Yeah, Mac, Mac Break Studio. We do something different every week. So, so this Thursday is uh, Mac Break Studio Live. Uh, next uh, Thursday is we're going to be doing a live shoot. We're going to bring in a model, a model in. And uh, Ooh, Frederick Johnson is going to be doing a live shoot, so that's what Twip Live. Fun. And so you have to watch it and, and discuss it and so on and so forth. Then we have Gear Media Tech the, the week after that. And then we have, you know, so it's different every week. It's, it's all around media. I think it's, it's a great it's, thing. It's I'm glad you're doing this. 6 p.m. Pacific, 9 p.m. Eastern, Thursday. And 
we were told that the best part of the show is actually the after show. Of course. Because we do this whole show. <laughs> Same's and then, true for us. And then at the end of the show, I sit there for half an hour and we talk about what didn't work. Yeah. So we go, okay, so the ca this camera angle can't keep on doing oh, that's that. Fun. And this needs to go here. And this needs to go <laughs> over here. Fun. And why were we doing this? And, and, and oh, we need, to, we need to change the edits. We need to edit faster. You know, so it's actually people who really enjoy the the um, you know behind the scenes stuff so check it out incidentally there's a new xcode 4.2 that uh, apple put out when uh, they put out all of this new stuff mm. didn't really tout but you might want to check a look uh, in your app store do the update uh it includes sdks for 10.7 and ios 5. even if you're not really a coder uh, one of the best things in the xcode it. download is uh quartz composer yeah it's you cool. should have it 1.8 gigs is the only negative on that one eh. andy anako's at the chicago sun times look for his review of the iphone 4s in the next couple of days look there he is with michael jackson no i don't i don't know who who are those people what is, going is that, that cosplay would be the earth, that would be the eartha kit catwoman zatanna from dc comics and not and not dr strange but dr voodoo from marvel comics well there you go it's uh, Andy's new band. Learn something every day. <laughs> Ask Siri about that, and all you'll get is <laughs> something you don't want. God, you're such a dork. I don't <laughs> want to even be. I don't want to be your personal assistant anymore. <laughs> yeah, go away. Thank you, Andy. Thank you, Alex. Thank you, Ken. Thank you for joining us. We do this show 11 a.m. Pacific, 2 p.m. Eastern, every Tuesday at Twit.TV. But you don't have to be here live because we make sure that there's a great-looking video download for you soon. High def video downloads of this 720p as uh, well as uh, of course audio for those of you who like to listen in the car uh, that's all at twit.tv and don't forget coming up at 2 30 this afternoon every monday through friday tnt tech news today with the latest tech news tonight at uh, 7 p.m pacific 10 p.m eastern we'll do coverage of the nexus prime and ice cream sandwich announcement and if you don't know what i'm talking about if you think that sounds like nonsense you can skip that one if you do you know you're going to want to tune in eileen rivera jason howell and gina trapani will talk about the latest version of google's android os tonight 7 p.m pacific 10 p.m eastern on twit.tv twit photo is coming up next i thank you for being here we'll see you next time now get back to work break time's over <laughs> <laughs>